What's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to another weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter. I'm Ja. And we're not the only ones in this live stream. <clears throat> no, because we have guests today, huh? Yep, yep. Uh, so very so, far away. Exactly. So today we're going to be looking at uh, Eric and Mike, who have been in Taiwan. Our headquarters is in Taiwan, Taipei City. Um, and they have been there for, I think, just over a week or yeah, something. Yeah, just now. over a week. And, uh, you know, they're there for specific reasons. We can, we can ask them that later, why they're there. Uh, they, they might divulge some information yeah, there. I hope, I hope they're still awake. <laughs> yeah, because it's quite late there now. It's yeah. like 11 p.m., I think. You know, Something like that, yeah. So plus seven bedtime. hours. So they might be, uh, you know, a bit sleepy. Who knows? Um, anyway, yeah. But we, we asked them, you know, uh, they were there anyway. So we thought, hey, you know, that's a nice opportunity to um, show you guys what our headquarters is actually like um, and some of the cool things that they do there and to, to explain some of the things that they do. So, you know, um, they did that. Uh, they they pre-record some stuff, of course, because they can't just go and walk around there at night. It's a bit suspicious. Yeah. They've got security guards, so they might get tasered. It's not as easy. It might uh... be for a different stream, you know, <laughs> that they, we can see how far they can go there at night until they get tasered or something. But um, yeah, we didn't do that for this stream. Um, hi from Dubai. Well, hi. Yeah, <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> Cheers for tuning in. Um, before we switch to them, however, like usually, we oh, have course, a giveaway. Like always, always. There we go. So, above my head, you can see it. Uh, there's a giveaway. If you want to participate, you have to go to www.msi.com slash two slash insider. There you should see a button that says uh, go to the giveaway or participate in the giveaway. If you click on it, you, it will ask you to perform a couple of actions. So, uh, things like, you know, like, subscribe to our channels. Yeah. Um, if you've already done that, you'll be automatically pretty much uh, in on the competition. And the more actions you perform there, the better your chance of winning. Yeah. Well, like usual, uh, we have more codes to be given away. Yeah. So don't worry if you didn't win on the first few tries. Yeah, you'll, you might get lucky later on in the stream, but do stick around because, hey, you know, you might get lucky. And if you don't, <coughs> uh, if you're not there, then you yeah. might miss out on a prize. And if the link uh, right there doesn't work for you, don't worry. Just go to the chat. Uh, yeah. Around every six minutes, there's going to be a direct link posted right there that you can yeah. click on. And there you can do the same uh, actions. And I mean, Ja says the chat. Uh, we're streaming on, I believe, seven Five, different channels. Six, seven. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, three channels of Twitter, um, uh, <laughs> Mixer. Mixer. So there, you know, there's a hell of a lot of chats there. Um, uh, not every chat always works with the link, uh, but you know, try out some of our channels. Yeah. I think YouTube should always be a reliable option. <laughs> Very there reliable. Always yeah. be uh, posted. So that's always a good channel to, to watch our stream, also in, in good quality and 60 FPS. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get started, shall we? Let's see if the guys are still awake. Yeah, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, Arson, Arson's feeling lucky. He says, I'm about to win again. Yeah, I think he already won twice, uh, two weeks in a row. I know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is who lucky. Knows? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, knock on the guys' doors. Yeah, uh, we'll put in our ears so we can actually hear them as well. So we oh, can actually have a conversation. It seems like they're still awake. They, they, they look hey like guys. they're a bit frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the air conditioning is just uh, bla uh, blasting too hard. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, I think you need to unmute them still, though. There's a yeah. chat can hear them. Exactly. Uh, all right, there so... Hello, guys. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hey, how are you doing? Good afternoon for you, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're we're still fresh, you know. By the time we get to the time you are now, we'll just be sleeping or, you know. We also feel sleepy because we still have a jet lag, uh, a bit of a cold, and we make long hours. And a we bit of a cold. Well, because it, it, it is winter there as well, right? So even though it's yeah, not quite not that cold, winter. Like, if you go it's here, winter. Yeah. It's still over 20 degrees Celsius. So. That's and winter in Taiwan. That's my kind of winter. <laughs> uh, somebody's saying MSI headquarter is in California. Uh, it's not a headquarter. No. We do have offices. I mean, this yeah. is actually something that will... It's a topic that uh, Eric and Mike will show because they've, they've shown uh, a couple of maps uh, later on in the video as well. There you can see some of the locations of our offices. But uh, the headquarters, the, the yeah. actual global the real headquarters, deal. is very much in Taiwan. <laughs> the <real Yeah>. deal. <laughs> yes, the real deal. So that's also where Mike and uh, Eric is right now uh, situated, yep. or are situated. Yep. And if you're lucky, we might catch an earthquake live on stream, but we don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> know. <laughs> Just shake the cam, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Nobody will notice. <laughs> 
Yeah, so you're, you're still on business trip. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what, what it is that you're doing there and why you are there at the moment? What, what you were doing there you're during your stay? Shopping and eating. A lot well, of yeah, eating, I mean, definitely. <laughs> that's generally why you would go to Taiwan. That's true. I've been there, so I know that the food is really good no, and the shopping. Um, and the so uh, don't tell everything about this yet. No, 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 no. no. So we are actually here uh, to work on our uh, 2020 and 2021 uh, platforms. So future products. Yeah, um, especially for uh, motherboards, uh, but we're also working on other future products uh, like cases, uh, monitors. We talked about uh, gaming desktop. We had a session about something else we cannot talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so um, of course we cannot mention any names, how how the platforms are called, or what the uh, uh, products. Uh, yeah, we're going. We, yeah, we're working on. Uh, so we have meetings with the engineers, with product marketing uh, in issue, uh, with the sales team, so that we can give feedback, give input, uh, sometimes make last-minute changes. Take of a look at the engineering samples, of course. Yeah, yeah. How how the heat things look, uh, what what we suggest them to change or to update. Um, mm. So a lot of meetings, basically. But long, quite long. cool, right? You get to see a lot of exclusive stuff and, and things that nobody has seen before. Some things That's that cool. of those might mar make it to the market in the end. Some things will be, you know, forgotten. Yeah, not everything what we see here um, in the past days will be on the market eventually. Um, yeah, maybe it's nice will, to one time make an item because, you know, uh, we go through the whole process. Huh? For yeah. example, if you're... Um, making a heat sink, uh, you have like tw uh, 27 shades of gray, red, black. Yeah, it's black, 50 black shades, is... right? 50 shades of yeah, gray. Anyway, oh, 50 right? shades. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you see them next to each other, you don't Whole see a difference. Direction. If you take, uh, yeah, if you hold them against the product, you can see the difference. So it's, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I see somebody saying in the chat, the green part. screen at hotel. Yeah, that's actually not a fake background. You no. guys are actually in, in the hotel room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is a real bed and stuff. It, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is a real wall but behind the bed. it's not our beds. No, you don't share it. Yeah, that's, I'm yeah. a little cold and I sneak up here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you don't function as Eric's pillow. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, so, so what's it been like this far in, in your trip? Have you also been, I mean, outside of the office, have you, have you seen some, some cool stuff in Taiwan as well? Definitely. I've been uh, up the Taipei 101, so the extremely high building, mm, over you. 500 meters tall, I think 508 meters. Um, extremely fast elevator, and then a great look over the city. I went in yeah. the evening, so lights everywhere. You see a lot of lights in Taipei anyway, especially now towards Christmas. All the trees are decorated and stuff. Yeah. So it's like mystic light Taipei at the moment. <laughs> but it's weird. There's something missing, right? Like snow or something. Yeah, snow is not really a thing here. <laughs> it's not really Christmas so without it's white snow. Like, it's actually yeah. quite funny because uh, it's winter here and, and everybody is having thick winter coats. And for us, it's... Uh, almost like, like spring or autumn, autumn because it's yeah. like shorts, 20 degrees. And no, not sure. Well, I, it's I guess you know, the way you're dressed now, that that's for, during the day probably that's okay to walk around in, right? That's not yeah, cold. Right? Us, like, yes. Last yeah. weekend I even walked around in a t-shirt in December, so that was <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So yeah, uh, indeed. So it's it's very different from what we are used to, and I I mean even you know for for us it's uh, it might even be. Well, you know, okay, but for people who are living in the Nordics who are used to like minus 20 or something or Siberia, you know, minus 40, they will probably be walking around there in beach slippers and, and you know, swimming trunks. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a different experience. Yeah, yeah. All right. What was your favorite part so far uh, in, in HQ or your favorite area or what, what did you see that, that you would say is your favorite thing? We cannot talk about that. Okay, so it was something. It was something. <laughs> Our favorite part is still under NDA. Yeah, still yeah. very confidential. All right, cool, cool. So we, we probably anyway, won't see that. I mean, in the video. a lot of exciting products are coming up, uh, and I believe uh, most of them. We of well, not most. Some of them uh, we will show at uh, CES already. Uh, so uh, CES is an event in uh, USA, which will start at I believe the 
7th or 8th of uh, January 2020. Yeah. So we will, of course, show at Computex, which is also in Taipei. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's in, in June. June. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite cool. So it's actually quite possible that right now you, you've already been, already been working on products or at least seeing products that will at least not be seen by anybody outside of the company for, I don't know, half a year. year or half a year yeah, at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How hard is it to keep that, those things to yourself if you get excited by some of the products? You have to be careful about your words sometimes, but it's, it's well, we're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get I used to it, right? <laughs> Yeah, people are asking if you have seen a lot of uh, RGB lighting in the headquarters. <laughs> Cannot talk about that yet. <laughs> wow, even that's confidential. Definitely. Damn. Well, anyway, think... we, we, uh, during our meetings, we we try to make some uh, uh, videos, some pre-recorded videos, to to give everybody an idea what HQ uh, uh, is about. So, so what uh, we do there, what it looks like. Yeah. Really, so, an inside view. Yeah, it's it's, it's for us the first time we do this, so it's a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, uh, vlog style, I would say. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually, you know, we didn't have a cameraman. Uh, oh, sorry, we didn't have a camera with us. So we asked somebody from uh, our corporate marketing team uh, to, uh, yeah, to follow us around. Um, of course, we were not allowed to show. Everything. Yeah, the because, confidential stuff will unfortunately not be in there. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so some testing facilities. So actually, we show you some testing facilities. We're not allowed to show you the new ones. Uh, yeah. We show you some. Uh, yeah, some parts we also removed from the videos because still not allowed to show. Yeah, yeah. But it, it gives you at least some idea of the amount of testing and stuff that goes on there. Yes. Indeed. Yes. I yes. think so it's a nice. very good idea, actually. It's yeah. just sometimes we had to swap a certain product. Or uh, they're yeah. they still using them, but the new equipment, the new machines, they're confidential uh, also uh, yeah. towards the competitors uh, or other uh, industry we're doing or building our products. Yeah, yeah it's part of, the, part of the process. You don't want to give yeah. away all your secrets, of course. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right, so I see a lot of people excited to see uh, MSI's HQ yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, people saying Eric should be very used to it. Uh... Yeah, I actually, <laughs> I think uh, two or three years ago, I was about, I think each year I was like two months into one. Yeah, I think uh, uh, four times two weeks. So Eric Quite knows regularly. fluent Chinese. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, in the first video, I almost got killed. In the beginning, I think the first minute or something. It's Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> the script almost yeah. killed me. Yeah, that's yeah, also a thing in Taipei. The scooters are so dangerous. Yeah, and there are <laughs> like so many of them. Thousands of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. Well, what do you say we uh, we just go and uh, watch the first one then? Yeah, perfect. You think yeah. it's a good idea? I think that's fair. Perfect. Can you guys still hang around for just a little bit? I know it's late, so we won't make it too late, but. Uh, I will stay awake a little longer, I think. Yeah? Okay, so just grab a beer and uh, enjoy and uh, yeah, see how you did. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Okay, so uh, now we're going to HQ. Watch out Amazon. for the scooters. Yeah, there are a lot of scooters over here. <laughs> so um, this is our headquarters. It's in the middle of a, like a yeah, living area, it looks like, right? Yeah, it's quite a busy street. Yeah, so a lot of traffic. So this is the entrance. Here you have a guard. Uh, so the guard basically uh, checks you in. Uh, they check the credentials. Uh, if you're a visitor, uh, they will uh, have some passes for you. But yeah, no visitor. They already Nothing. recognize you. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then we can uh, pass. So there are a lot of uh, regulations uh, for the uh, building, uh, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, etc. Please be sure to wear your visitor badge as you enter. Where is yours? <laughs> I forgot mine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So this is the headquarter. Uh, basically, there are uh, two buildings. Uh, this is the first building and that's the second building over there. Which uh, one's in, older, by the way? In the back. Sorry? Which one is older? I don't know. I'm here. Maybe, maybe I'm just a visitor as well. <laughs> so over there, you see the MRT as well. So this is just brand new. Uh, they're building an MRT here. I think they're building it already for three years, and in like uh, maybe half a year it will open up. And the MRT station 
is right around the corner. So, so the Taipei that's, subway system. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Taipei yeah. subway, MRT, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that's quite cool because normally we come by taxi from a hotel mm -hmm. and uh, in the like half year we can uh, come by MRT. Finally, no more traffic. No, indeed, no indeed. No longer indeed. stuck. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the second building, uh, it's basically, and at the bottom you have a lot of meeting rooms uh, for, uh, for yeah, meetings, uh, for... Uh, That's what you usually do in a meeting room. <laughs> for clients, for uh, uh, vendors like uh, Intel, AMD and NVIDIA when they're coming here. Also for customers. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, over there in that building also you have a notebook department. Uh, you have desktop, desktop department, uh, monitor department yeah. indeed. Um, and there is, rumor is that there is also a production line, but rumor, we're rumor still finding it. out. So if, if there is one, we will show you. Okay, so let's walk to the first building. So basically this is uh, six floors high. Walk over here. So normally you, you just smile to the guards and you wave. You see, that always works, even without badge. Yeah, then you don't need a badge, just wave. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the, the best way to secretly get yeah. in of MSI, just wave to the guard. Some lucky on the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not lucky because everybody is trapping, uh, uh, walking stepping on, on him. Yeah, yeah, stepping on him, yeah. On say trapping. <coughs> so uh, we have three elevators. I never know how they work because first they go down. So this is on the roof. So let's uh, see all the departments. So at the first department, uh, you have the uh, procurement department. They purchase all the materials. Uh, you have uh, GMP, so that's uh, graphic cards and uh, gaming gear uh, department. You also have Corp Marketing. So Corp Marketing, I think they make this kind of plates. Uh, they design Everything that logo. has to do with like, the MSI identity, pretty uh, much. They make PowerPoint yeah. templates, uh, but also they maintain the website, you have web team. Those are the ones that get angry if you still use the old logo for <laughs> Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. And uh, video team, I mean, here are two persons from video team. Oh, they're trying to walk away. They're helping Hello. us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and Matt, thank you. <laughs> so um, then on the uh, second floor. Um, Important floor. Yeah, so actually this floor you have the GMP sales division. On the second floor you have the R&D division. So uh, That's R where they make all the nice graphic card coolers. The, the like thermal that, the stuff it, indeed. Yeah. Uh, the PCB design is going on there. All the uh, technical stuff. Engineers indeed. Uh, then uh, you have on the third floor uh, you have uh, also R&D. Uh, but you then have C&D, so for motherboards, well, for that's, desktop. Well, that's more on the third floor. So yeah. th this is also for OEM, mm -hmm. so we will probably not uh, record on that uh, floor. Uh, but also, top, of, uh, top PC is over there. So later we will go to top PC. The MSI uh, overclocker. Yeah, uh, MSI overclocker, uh, memory validation. Uh, so uh, they will do a lot of many. Uh, how many persons do they have? Six or seven? Oh, I don't know from the top of my head, but we're going there later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will see let's later. Let's ask them. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So then on the first floor, uh, there is uh, mainboard R&D. Uh, so there, most of our meetings are on that floor. So uh, this week, you know, we're here for the platform for uh, 2020, mm -hmm. 2020 already. Don't say the name yet. Still no, 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 still, still NDA, still, <laughs> still NDA. Just yeah. reminding you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so there you have all the, uh, the product managers, the R&D people who make the PCBs, thermal department, etc. Um, and Technology Document Control Center, that's actually the ones who make the manual. Um, then on the fifth floor, our, uh, what is it? Um, uh, legal team, uh, HR team, so. All the paperwork. Oh, let's say all the paperwork, yeah. yeah. It sounds, looks like a big floor. So that, <laughs> it looks less exciting than the other ones, right? <laughs> we almost <laughs> never drop by. <laughs> uh, and then on the top floor, uh, there, there you have the sales departments for CND. And CND you know, is computing and display. So that's basically our motherboards. Uh, well, also our desktop systems. Desktops, monitors, monitors well, yeah. cases, uh, and some other NDA stuff which is coming up. Uh, probably CES, you will see. Um, and the president's office, so the big boss is also sitting on the uh, sixth floor. All right, so that was the first uh, clip. Um, I see a lot of people also asking, me, hey, is this Japan? No, it's Taiwan, <laughs> it's a small <laughs> island. <laughs> Uh, to the south of China, basically, it's it's well for where we are sitting in Europe. It's actually not that yeah. far from Japan, but it's still a couple of hours flying, mm. I think. Close yes, enough. Island east from China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I see a lot of people just uh, saying a lot of nice things. Well, you you guys uh, you showed us uh, basically building one and and just the, like the register of what is in there. So as you can see, yeah. 
each floor has different departments. Uh, you are going to show us just a couple of them, I think, because you know to cover all of it is just impossible within the live stream. Well, a lot of things are boring. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of meeting rooms and there are a lot of cubicles. A lot of, yeah, with, a lot of desks. Yeah, a lot of desks <laughs> with people yeah. working. Um, but yeah, we, we, we try to pick out the interesting stuff. Yeah, I also see that some people are saying that the audio was out of sync on the video, so we're trying to fix that. I'm not sure if we can do that. Uh, we tested it before. It was well, not we, a thing. On Twitch, typi typically, it's uh, you know when yes. you don't have yeah when, when you when you go live, you mm -hmm. might have issues. Because so, now uh, we hear someone say the whole stream is out of sync, not just the film. So right oh. now when we're talking, that's the same issue for all of you. Oh wow! Or not? That's weird. we don't have the issue here on if when when we watched. Hmm. On Twitch. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Maybe it's a YouTube issue. I don't know. Yeah, it happened on It's not a thing. Yeah, because some at people all. for some people yeah, it seems to weird. be the case and for some it no. doesn't seem to be the case. We're trying Just to monitor the chat. Reboot your PC. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Maybe try to refresh your mod you can refresh your web browsers, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Unplug your router and plug it back in. Yeah, well, let's <laughs> let's not let's not try to cut yeah. our viewership in half just just yet. Uh, <laughs> no, so I, just I, refresh I hope your browser, it's still guys. Doable, uh, you know. Unfortunately, we can't really restart the stream. Um, so apparently, a lot of people, especially on YouTube, are having some sync issues. Yeah, but even on YouTube, it's still very divided. Some yeah. have the problem, some don't. Yeah, so it's it's really weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> some say reinstall Windows. Yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> format C or something. Um, no, so let's let's just try and um, yeah, let's just try. I mean, maybe you can if the guys on Twitch don't have the issues, maybe you can find our channel on Twitch. It's uh, also called MSI Gaming, so you can try it. Uh, yeah, people are saying, uh, well, one is saying YouTube is good, and the other one is saying YouTube, it's a YouTube problem, Twitch is okay. So if you are having problems on our Twitch channel with the audio sync, uh, you can always try to go to the, our Twitch channel. Um, ja, maybe yeah. you, you can go into the chat, right? Maybe you can, yeah, on YouTube, you can... I'll give you guys uh, all the, link the links to our, to our Twitch. Our... Yeah, to our Twitch channel. Uh, well, anyway, so while... While uh, Jazz doing that, um, so yeah, Eric, how, how was that? Nearly getting killed by a scooter with uh, some gas tanks on the back. Yeah, my God. I mean, it happens it's... every day here. I was <laughs> gonna say, isn't that you just normally when just that's when you go there. to cross the street? Crossing the street is, yeah, you're risking your life. Yeah, it's gonna be really, 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 really careful. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's which, quite normal there. Which is there, actually yeah. pretty strange because if you go with the subway, with the MRT system, yeah. everybody lines up very polite. First they let the people out, then the people uh, waiting, they go in. Uh, everybody uh, takes their turn. But everyone the, makes exact lines yeah. everywhere, yeah. also in stores. But on the street, it's like uh, carnage. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm oh, sorry, I was going because that's a good point. You, you said in a video somewhere that, you know, in the background, you could see an MRT. MRT is the, the subway station, right? In uh, yes. Taipei. Yes. So they, that they call the MRT uh, or Metro Rail tracks, or I don't know what, what it stands yeah, for. It, it's very convenient. Uh, it's uh, throughout all uh, uh, Taipei. Uh, it's very fast and it's very cheap. So yeah. uh, and so, sometimes very busy. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, Taipei, it's it's not a small city, right? It's quite big. There's I think greater Taipei. It's like what, 5 million or more people? No, I think 2.5. Right? I think that's only Taipei, but greater Taipei is also yeah. the area around yeah. it. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. agglomeration yeah. is indeed something like that. Anyway, during the weekend, we went to the to the sea uh, by car. And I think it took it was a one hour drive and we were still in Ta Taipei. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a big city. So indeed, you know, a transport system like that uh, is, is quite useful, uh, like all major cities have pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good uh, way so to go traffic around. traffic can get so busy, so taking the yeah. subway is the quickest way in most situations. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right, so I see people, a lot of people are now joining us on, on Twitch and saying that that's a lot better, so that's, that's good. Good. Um, all right, so uh, I think Jazz now also, I see Jazz typing the uh, the address of the Twitch channel. There we go. All right. Um, shall we go and uh, see the next uh, the next part? 
<laughs> All right, we have more lined up. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, cause we, we ended mm. with uh, you guys going uh, to get an elevator and, and going up to, I believe, the third floor. Yes. Um, to check out some of the work being done there at the office. Together with one of our uh, colleagues, you might actually uh, recognize him when, he, when he's in the screen. Um, so, because he's been on, on our stream before to answer questions live from HQ. The one and only Henry. <laughs> exactly, the one, and hen the one and only Henry Tai. Um, so he'll be there to uh, give some information. Uh, can you tell me what, what Henry's uh, function is or what his title is for people who Henry don't know him yet? Henry uh, is one of the uh, motherboard product managers. Uh, so uh, he... Knows a lot of technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he's lot. one of project leaders for uh, the future motherboards. Uh, and yeah, he is also somebody, you know, he's not only technical, but he also knows how to talk um, in easy language about his work. Yeah. So that's also why we took him, uh, yeah, we took him for explanation because some things are really technical, uh, they're internal, so we also don't know how it exactly works. So we can only ask questions and he was basically uh, for a large part our tour guide. Yeah, yeah. all right, so let's, uh, let's go and watch the first part of that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so yep. uh, this is memory uh, we call it validation test. Validation for the uh, QVL. QVL, okay. QVL. So that's a qualified vendor list. Yeah. So this is very important for us, right? Super important. I always, each, of, not each live stream, but like if we have a live stream about memory and mm -hmm. then we talk a little bit about uh, compatibility, I always say we used to suck with memory compatibility with DDR3. Yes. But we changed with DDR4. Since DDR4, we are. Strong. Yeah, so maybe you can explain us a little bit what we're doing here and how we're doing it. Yeah, uh, normally we have a dedicated engineering uh, for each uh, platform, mm -hmm. no matter it's Intel or AMD, okay. uh, either by chipset, we're doing the uh, memory module testing yeah. by different channel, by different combination, you know, uh, for, for memory module, they used to have uh, different chips, Samsung, Micron, yes. Hynix. Yes. So yes. A sort of a combination they need to uh, put it on one motherboard and do a whole testing. Yeah, so basically if, if, if you test these, or if, let's say if you validate these memories yeah. on, uh, for example, um, X299 yeah. Intel, mm -hmm. it can be different on Z390 again. Yeah, totally different. Totally because, different. The, because the memory controller inside the CPU, yeah. so the architecture is different, yeah. so it's not uh, it's not gonna happen to doing the copy testing. Testing, yeah. so you have to do it individually. Yeah. And how many? Because I see a lot of memory here. Yeah. So uh, how many uh, different brands are we testing? Do you know that or validating? Oh, for one platform, we we have now uh, over one thousand. Over one thousand kits. kits. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot of memory. Yeah, a lot of. Yeah. And it's still increasing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's so we cooperate with a lot of memory vendors because we want to get their kits. Yep. Before they hit the market. Yep. And uh, what, for example, uh, because I also hear sometimes after an Agisa mm -hmm. update from AMD, for example, that mm -hmm. we need to do validation again. Again, start over again. Start over again. Yeah, and, and also we uh, still have uh, other patches or uh, bugs from the previous previous version. Yeah. And then we debug again and doing the validation. Wow, so that's really so, a lot of work. So how many people are doing this? Uh, right now we have uh, six people yeah. right here. So doing the uh, exactly the same thing. For yeah. the QVL. So this is uh, Max, right? Yeah, this is Max. Hi, Max. Hey, good to see you. So he's doing the testing right now for uh, these platforms. Yeah. So can you maybe explain a little bit what he's running? Uh, right now we have a, a different configuration, uh, two DRAMs or uh, four DRAMs. Okay. That means uh, yeah, two thing by uh, two thing per channel or one thing per channel. So we, u we usually do have a, a lot of a benchmark to showing the frequency, to showing the uh, the voltage, the information from, for example, CPU Z. Yeah. And we're doing the uh, fine tune by uh, entering the BIOS, mm -hmm. uh, doing some of the adjustment uh, parameters, voltages, and timings. Then we will check again if that works after we enter in the OS. Okay. Yeah. And, and then this is all stored in our BIOS. Yeah. And then at one moment we have a new new BIOS. First a better BIOS, right? Yeah. And then uh, we have a final, uh, what we call MP BIOS. MP yeah, BIOS. final. I always try to write final because final sounds like there is nothing new afterwards. But you know, there's no 
really final, you know. Yeah, we update it them. Yeah, it's yeah. a stable, stable, stable for release. Yeah, you can uh, say that, yeah. mass production BIOS. Yes, exactly. So you see, we have a lot of uh, like hundreds of items to you know yeah. fine tune. So our engineering is really, really familiar with that. So we can do it quickly uh, to do it uh, efficiently. Yeah. Then you know we have a 1,000 kids to doing the testing. So what if a, if a consumer has a problem with his memory? He bought just a, a new uh, yeah. set of memory yeah. and then it's not stable on MSI. Yeah, uh, we have a FAE. We have a MSI. So FAE forum. is a support team. Yeah, FAE support team. Yeah. Uh, report back to the internal uh, to the uh, memory team. For example, so they should Max. go to register.msi.com. Yeah, uh, and then uh, send their information about memory. How to do CPU Z screenshots or. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, screenshots, uh, system configuration, yeah. uh, all the devices with, uh, is used. And then we can duplicate the issue and then we find out the solution. He's also testing RGB? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> On RGB memory? RGB everywhere. Yeah. Every RGB everywhere, okay. Yeah. So I see here a lot of other test stations. So these are for other, other platforms? Yeah, all the platforms. For example, there's a, uh, we have X299 here. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously, it's so a high-end. Also, stuff. after the release, we continue. Oh, I see a lot of nice Threadripper CPUs mm -hmm. over there. So, yeah. after the uh, release, we continue testing. Of course. Yeah. It's non-stop. Non-stop. Wow. Mm. Really impressive. Yeah. So, I see here also some, some uh, PCB. Yes. Z97, PC Mate, old one. Yeah, you know. Just for... Uh, Just for, for shows. For shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah, special. Yeah. Okay, over here also some, uh, again, the same testing. So, mm. there's really a lot of time going into this. And yeah. everybody, this is for overclocking memory, right? Because you also explained we oh, also yeah, yeah. have the normal memory yeah. testing. Right now here, we're focusing like 80% uh, for the XMP uh, okay. memory yeah. kits. So, uh, that's so pretty So, basically, high this is the memory which runs above the... Uh, default spec. Yeah, above the so default spec. So if you have, for example, a uh, uh, standard uh, Z390 platform, what is the default spec? Uh, 2400? Uh, 2666. Oh, 2666. Yeah. So, and that is tested by another team. Yep. And everything above that for the same Z... Uh, and down to this team. Yeah, is this team. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And in the end, everything goes to a website to the QVL list. Yeah, we merge the data and the... Uh, in uh, upload to the website. Yeah. So if you go to our website, uh, support, you find, no, it's not support, it's a... Uh, it's a uh, compatibility. Yeah, uh, compatibility, you, yeah. and you click on memory, because you also have CPU compatibility. Yeah. Click on memory, you find a long list with all the memories, and you can see if it's too dim, for dim, mm -hmm. uh, what clock speeds. Yes. Um, the PAR number of the module. Yeah, and, so uh, you can really double check. And this is also recommended if you ever buy a motherboard, Check the QVL in advance. You already know if something is running stable. And if not, mm. they can email you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, here you have it. Eric said it. If, uh, if you have problems, you can always email Henry. <laughs> Yeah. Also, fine for fan mail, by the way. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. 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 He's, <laughs> he would love some fan mail, of course. He's a great guy, so he deserves it as well. Um, yeah, so, so can you t we saw a lot of questions in the chat. People are finding it very interesting. Uh, some of the things I caught was uh, people, some people said, yeah, it was quite, they thought it was quite uh, empty in the office. Can you say something about that? Yeah, everybody was fired. Ah, okay, so they just fired the whole apartment just, just so mm. that you could make the movie. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Low budget, low budget. <laughs> no, I think this is what, during lunch break or something. Yeah, I think that so, we as well, yeah. so many yeah. people were we, probably. All the movies are, I don't want to say uh, the different, uh, yeah, several several days, I think three or four days and several time frames. So. If you're wondering why all of a sudden I'm wearing a different sweater, then. Yeah, yeah. and also <laughs> later it will is dark, out, dark outside. So uh, yeah. when we arrived this morning and when we go to building two later on, it's uh, like evening. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. But th um, this memory was really interesting because I know, of course, that we do this, but I never uh, looked in detail how we do it. And they had so many CPUs and memory over there. It was like yeah. paradise. And, like trays completely <laughs> filled with yeah. CPUs and memory. Yeah. And, and I noticed the, 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 the camera guy from Corp, uh, Corporate Marketing didn't really zoom in. So it's a pity we didn't see everything, all the memory, but wow. Yeah. So they, they, they really take like days, weeks, months to, to, to verify that everything works and to make sure that you guys, when you build a system, that you don't have any issues, pretty much no matter what memory modules you use, it should work, hopefully. Yeah, and, and this is 
this is uh, not an easy job because, like they said, when when uh, AMD or Intel uh, brings out new BIOS code, let's you say have like to do that, everything over again. So yes. it's it's a continuous process. So even yeah. if you validated everything on a certain motherboard, one thing can change in the BIOS, and you have yeah. to do everything again. Yeah. So with the mm -hmm. recent AMD BIOS updates, indeed, that's th those guys have been really busy. Exactly. <laughs> yes. All right, all right. Very nice. long working hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so guys, if you have any questions about uh, what you're seeing, let us know in the chat. Yeah, you know, just we, let we, us know. Yeah, hey, we Peter, can always... Yes. I have my notebook here. Yeah. And do you know why? Uh, I, I, you want to show us something? I think it's time for our first winner of the giveaway. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you there. I think we should, so, we should do the first winner. I and will it's, really uh, draw a winner live from Taiwan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So who is it? Yeah. Let's, uh, we, let's oh. hope the script works. Oh, Eric can call out this one because this oh. one has this person has a really nice nickname. Yes. Oh. Uh, so uh, the winner for the first. What, what are we giving away today? Uh, Steam codes, <laughs> of course. What, okay, what do we yeah, give away so, every so, every ooh. week? Twenty dollars. Yes, team. Eric. Yes. We give okay. away your new car. So, the winner, how do you pronounce that? Eric? <laughs> Eric C, 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 C. It's like Eric with two yeah, C's. Yeah, 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 indeed, Eric. indeed. So, but it's not me, unfortunately. I was, I gonna, I, I was really <laughs> thinking that maybe it, sounds it was very, you. Sounds very fishy. Yeah, it sounds suspicious. No, no, okay. His real name is... Uh, <laughs> no, no, Mama. no, beep! <laughs> <laughs> His real name is uh, Maman. Anyway, I know, I know you guys, uh, with the I know you guys are not in Europe, but... Congrats, you know, congrats. Uh, the, the law still applies. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, there's still more to come. Yeah, so Eric with multiple C's, congratulations. You win a Steam code, we're going to send thank it you, to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not I'm you. Oh. <laughs> I will be monitoring your email box. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have access, huh? Oh, only one C. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not enough C's in there. All right, so congratulations. You get a Steam code. We'll send it to you as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, so let's see, any other questions? I, I don't think at the moment, I just see a lot of guys saying, oh, I never knew that. That's really cool that we get to see some of that. I, I did well, see somebody saying, yeah, I did see somebody saying something about uh, DDR3. Why not DDR4? Not sure, maybe you misheard something. Uh, they were, I believe, pretty much only testing DDR4, or at least, I think, right? Because uh, yes. back, uh, like legacy testing, or is that also a thing? Would they test yeah. DDR3 modules as well on, on older products? Do you um, think? Well, if there's a compatibility problem and, and anybody has a compatib compatibility issue, of course, they will test that. On but, request, yes. Yes, but main mm -hmm. uh, testing at this moment is only DDR4. Right, because I yeah. mean, for, for, uh, DDR4 has been the standard now for how many years already? Ooh, uh, call Quite a few. I yeah. think Skylake was the first Five, platform, four. so that's four years ago. Yeah, yeah I would say four years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, going back and testing DDR3, that means you have to go back, you know, yeah. for product four years and, back. That's And the memory testing, happen. because I think we didn't mention this in the video, it's also getting more um, uh, complex because you not only need to test one DIM, two DIMs, four DIMs, but you now also have like uh, DIMs of, uh, what is it, 256 um, of a... Uh, the bigger DIMM size. 32 gigabytes? Yeah, 32 gigabytes. So you right. can go up to uh, 256 uh, megabytes of memory. In total. Gigabytes. Right. Gigabytes. Hmm. Yeah. It's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, so we need to... A little bit jet lag. So, so these, these guys are probably going to be uh, expanding their, uh, their operations soon as well. If they get even more BIOS updates, even more memory modules. Either that or they'll be working overtime. I think they're already working overtime. They probably are, yeah, yeah. They have to be. But hey, the best thing is they like the job. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you uh, what you need with a job hey, like we're that. We're also doing overtime right now. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but but you know, we are very appreciative of that. So thank yeah. you for doing it. You're probably going to in the bar. You're probably going for a late night snack now. So so now you tell me why didn't you set up in the bar? Maybe the people would have you know be been okay with that. Too loud. That's probably. true. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, let's let's check out the next scene, shall we? All right. Let's go. So now we're going to Top PC. Yeah. I see some smoke already. Some secret base. Because this is our in-house overclocker here at MSI. Yeah. Welcome. So that's it. Is it safe to enter? <laughs> yeah. Safe. Hello. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi. Uh, let me introduce. This is Coven. Hi, Coven. Yes. This is Guang. Hi, Guang. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. So you're doing the overclocking right now. Yeah, that's true. So we can already see a lot of LN2 equipment. Yeah. So this is for the more extreme overclocking. Yeah, right? yeah. Not, yeah. A, Basically, not a lot of people a, mostly do at home. It's like a daily life for them with the nitrogen. So uh, people like Coven, uh, they just push the limits of the motherboard to supporting a CPU doing the overclocking. So uh, you see that it's quite efficiently to use the BIOS to fine tune the, you know, everything inside. I see now we're using Core i9-9900K and Z390 yeah. ITX motherboard. Yeah. That's a perfect combination for memory <laughs> overclocking, right? Exactly. So we can see both the CPU and the memory under LN2. Yes. And oh. let, me, let me remind that this is a, like a quick testing for, uh, with the LN, LN2. Uh, for the competition, you need uh, like uh, complete uh, protection for the oh, motherboard. Isolation. Isolation, yes. With the, with the fiber and, and the other you know, protection for the motherboards. And this is also where Top PC does his live streaming, right? Yes, this is the... <laughs> For the people who watch the, uh, his live stream, this might be a familiar background. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also where a lot of records are being broken, right? Yes. So DDR4 over 6 gigahertz, stuff like that. Yeah. So whenever you see the records, it comes out from this room. So how does the LN2 and stuff work? Because I see some huge containers here. Mm -hmm. How do you do it exactly? Uh, normally, uh, that's a huge, con a huge tank here. Then, if we were doing the testing, we use the bottle. Smaller ca bottles, yeah. Yeah. Is it okay? Okay, yeah. Can you, can you show the results? Pour a little bit. Don't, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. With the hand, with your hand. With my hand? Yeah. For sure. Can yeah. I use your hand? Yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> don't worry. It's okay? Yeah. Whoa. It's, it's safe, <laughs> it's safe, yeah. When it comes out, it turns like a, a yeah, air. Yeah. So this is minus 169 degrees Celsius, right? Minus uh, 100, 196, no, I think. Even. 90, yeah. 96. 196, yeah. minus yeah. 196. Yeah. So extremely cold. So here we also see a temperature meter. So yeah. that's the temperature of the actual CPU right now. Yes, yes. You know, we, we, uh, we're not just... Mm, pushing the limits, but also we uh, need to know where is the code bug or the code boot it mm -hmm. is. So then we can, you know, find a solution or find a way to pass it and to achieve the records. Oops, you love it. Spilled some. <laughs> <laughs> I like this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I need it at home as well. <laughs> So what memory frequency are we running at right now? 5,400. 5,400. Yeah, okay. 5,000. You don't see that. So reference spec for this platform is uh, 2,666. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got the, you know, two so times double. or yeah. double two times. So for the rest, very basic layout, simple screen, mm -hmm. simple keyboard mouse. Yeah. But extreme performance. So, what what did we see there, guys? You Mike, saw you wanna, where you want to tell us wrong. about you want to <laughs> tell us about you know what, what happened? Yeah, I put some LN2 on my hand. Right. Yeah. Usually you say don't play with fire. In this case, it's a little bit different. Yeah. So there was a, a bit of lag in the in the effect, or <laughs> because in the in the shots you seem to be fine. Yeah, I'm still fine. Just toilet <laughs> paper. <laughs> So how was it like? I mean, what well, you know, you you walk in there. It's a it's a lab, pretty much. You know, they're they're doing all kinds of extreme stuff there. What was it like? Is it like a playground, or how does it feel? For nerds, this definitely is a playground. Absolutely. If you walk in, you already hit the LN2 container with the door, pretty <laughs> yeah, much. Actually, when the door was closed, and you cannot see this on the video, but uh, uh, LN2 uh, vapor Smoke. is coming. Yeah. Uh, she blow the door. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really cool. And if you come in, you already see the overclocking tools and all the hardware everywhere. New hardware. New hardware. Yeah, it's the hardware haven. Oh, heaven, <laughs> exactly, yeah. 
And and what about the LN2? Because you know we saw you pouring it on your hand and stuff. What does that feel? Do you even feel it, or is it like does it dissipate so fast that you don't even really feel yeah, it? Yeah, it dissipates directly when it hits your hand. So that's also why your hand doesn't freeze if you pour it on. Um, I wasn't well, too you, sure you, about you, this, so. I just tested it on Henry's hand first. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you're you're so, such uh, a hero. <laughs> <laughs> the so courage. When he was okay, I thought, okay, then I have to do it as well. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, what, like I said, you know, do you even feel it? Is it? Do you feel like a cold, you know, the cold air of the smoke or something, you know, coming off it? Or did, is it not it's, really... It's a little bit cold, but nothing special. You barely feel it, actually. Right. All right. And you said something about what was the te the exact temperature? It was minus one hundred and ninety six degrees. That's the temperature of the liquid nitrogen itself. Right. Uh, but of course, if you're overclocking, you're hovering around a certain temperature. So mm -hmm. you, the CPU has a sweet spot in which it performs best. Um, so, for example, it can be minus one hundred and twenty degrees. And then getting technical. Too technical, no. and then you try to get it to that temperature. So sometimes yeah. you you heat it up with a hair dryer, and sometimes um, you have to pour some extra to right. really keep at a certain level. Because I I know why you're getting so technical because you actually got like a, a little course of, of overclocking. You, you, I don't know if you've done this before. Uh, in the, I don't know if you were you were part of the overclocking team or something, but uh, you might have some experience already. Actually, um, that goes back quite a long time uh, i did in the past i did ddr2 overclocking until pretty high frequencies but never with liquid nitrogen um, right so this was a bit more extreme right um, okay. and two generations later so ddr2 <laughs> to ddr4 is, is quite a big step yeah. so the frequencies were also a little bit higher right and what were you doing what were you overclocking here specifically was it the the, the memory speed or the, the cpu yeah, the or memory frequency memory okay that's also why we were using our uh, Z390i um, Gaming Edge motherboard. Hmm. This is uh, also the lab of Toppy C. Uh, he he is one of the MSI employees, and he's he has a lot of world records on his name uh, for both highest uh, CPU frequency, but also uh, highest DDR uh, frequency, so memory frequency, right. and yeah, this ins insane speeds. But he was not in the shot, right? No, we well we expected him to be there. I mean, this all is not uh, reversed, you know. Uh, yeah. We we just do our thing and uh, yeah. um, we just yeah. walk around. We and, walk and in. You and... assumed he was there, right? It wasn't yeah, really planned or something. So you guys just yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys just <laughs> grabbed whoever you could have uh, could have grabbed. Yeah, yes. yeah. was there and he did a great Ooh. job uh, demonstrating the overclocking. So yeah, yeah. I see some guys uh, asking what was written on the whiteboard. Uh, I thought it was a lot of, you know, they just make notes there, right? About their overclocking attempts and... I like don't that. know what was written there and um, maybe an NDA? Can at be. some point, anyway, at some point I saw Kovan writing something for you, right? Mike, he explained to you the, the curve about, you know, what's the ideal temperature and stuff like this. So exactly. basically Normally, the whiteboard... You know, they, they write down the sweet spots where it fails yeah. or, you know, yeah. uh, so they... It's just like a um, uh, uh, yeah, like a whiteboard where you write down stuff. Yeah. It's just uh, like notes. For example, we reached this frequency when we yeah. went to that frequency with these memory timings. It crashed. Yeah. So next time you know. Just what to, to fine switch. fine tune uh, the memory to achieve the highest frequency. Right, and but it could also perfect. it could also be some of the stuff on there could also be a grocery list. Like, okay, I need to get milk and bread and. <laughs> that was probably Top PC's lunch list. That one Red Bull. Yeah, yeah you never know. Yeah, get, get gotta get some new LN2 because you know we're running yes. out. Well, no, they they had a lot of LN2. Yeah. Yeah, there was a big uh, big, big tank state. there. And we also, uh, I think, because we we can go to the next uh, bit because I think they actually let you do some overclocking as well, right, Mike? Definitely. Did you destroy any hardware just before we go into mm -hmm. this part? They were cut out, uh, cut out of footage. I, I'm not Eric. I don't destroy hardware. <laughs> well, give it, a, give it a while. You're not, you're not in MSI that long, so you know, give it a few more years, you'll get there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. I'll let's go sure to watch the next up. part. Let's see how Mike does when he's actually doing some overclocking. Can I try it out? Okay. Long shot. Yeah. Okay. Short. Go to the five thousand six hundred. Thank 
you want mm-hmm. to make a report again? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can I do the <laughs> pouring now? Yeah. Okay. You can control the undo part. Yeah. And join it up in the memory pot. In the memory pot? Yeah. Just breaking some records on a casual <laughs> Monday morning. <laughs> I don't know what you do at Monday morning at work, but yeah, this is what we do. <laughs> All right. So not only so, the memory was fast, but also the video. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we sped some of it up because you know honestly we were watching it and it was a lot of you know Covan trying takes to a lot of time. Go, go van <laughs> trying patience. to teach you a lot of stuff, but you know, it's uh, a lot of details. And, and he was just trying to tell you, okay, so now you need to pour a bit in because you need to keep the temperature at a certain level and stuff like that. Um, but did you break, because you're saying, you know, well, just casually break some records on a Monday morning. Did you actually break records? No, not the actual DDR4 frequency record. That one is now uh, past six gigahertz and we went um, a little bit over 5,800 megahertz. Oh, wow. Still pretty which, okay. which is an extremely high frequency, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Still pretty freaking high then, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Much higher than the one on my PC at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that goes for most of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not even rocking for yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. True. Well, I, I, you know, I doubt many people have LN2 at their home, you know, their everyday setup. So uh, Yeah, casual. And even with LN2, it's not easy. No, 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 no. Because it's really you about, you know, easy. sustaining a balance, right? If, if I'm understanding this correctly, it's really, you know, trying to find the, the, the right balance between keeping the temperature and making sure that everything runs because it's not, susta- it's like you can't go and play games on a system when you're doing like this, right? Because you no. have to keep the temperature up. So it's only basically if you wouldn't keep pouring the LN2 and then keeping it at the right point, you're just waiting until the system will become unstable and crash. Exactly. You will, you will get a blue screen then. Right. Um, this is just for um, validation purposes. So mm-hmm. you boot up, you increase the frequency, and you can validate that you can reach a certain frequency. But this is not stable enough to do gaming on or anything else. So but, not for high workloads. Yeah, but this this this, this in-house overclocking uh, team, let's say like that, they they are helping us to push the hardware to the limit. So uh, sometimes there are bottlenecks in the hardware, like uh, <laughs> for work for LN2 or some other uh, um, issues which prevent over the, the main board from getting the maximum from the CPU. So by doing this extreme LN2 overclocking in-house, we can already fine-tune the BIOS and, and the platform uh, for uh, better air overclocking, for example. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's uh, also a lot of values they discover. They will put back into the BIOS uh, for memory, yeah. uh, like what we saw with the memory validation. So, yeah, this, this helps the performance of the platform for everybody. So even if you, I mean, most people won't do much overclocking, if any, on their on their systems, right? It's quite technical. You really have to, and you really have to be into it to understand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But you know, this just makes sure that even if you are pushing the the system to, or even past its limits, pretty much, uh, our board should still be able to handle it. And and any issues they they encounter while doing that, they will try to fix uh, bef- even before the product launches, yeah. right? Yeah, but. Yeah. It's also about efficiency. Uh, so uh, if you're running, if, if let's say you overclock your CPU to five gigahertz, five gigahertz can give a slower performance than another five gigahertz overclock. Or let's say, okay, make it easy. Five gigahertz can give lower performance than a 4.9 gigahertz overclock. Yeah. So it's about the efficiency you get from your overclock. And right. that's also what they're tuning. Yeah, so actual performance in the end, what counts, yes, not just the all, numbers. It, it, this number doesn't mean anything. It's all about what you're getting out of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right. Cool, cool. Um, Very cool. Ellen, too cool. Literally cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of people asking, you know, that's all well and good, but where do they keep the, the plushies, the lucky plushies? So did, did you discover the, the big uh, place where they keep them? No. There's still no. a secret. It's still a mystery, well, still I guess. NDA. We, we found a much more interesting lucky. Yeah. You'll see it later. A very big one. A right. huge one. Huge one. Mm. Customized can it, one. Can it fly? Can it what? Can it fly? 
No, it was too, it. Wow. too heavy, I guess. <laughs> it's too yeah. fat. Yes, I'm trying. All right. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see the next because you 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 again you um, filmed different aspects of the process, right? Or at least you tried to film different aspects of the process. So the next movie is also covering one of those uh, things that probably a lot of guys don't know or people don't know that we actually uh, tested and how we tested. So let's uh, let's watch the next bit. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Hello. Very nice cubicle. <laughs> I yeah. really like it. So this is where the audio testing happens, yeah, right? For the audio testing, which is called the audio precision, for the uh, audio codec or the whole solution, which we put it on on the motherboard. So uh, Vicky is helping on the testing for audio jacks, uh, whether it's the signal accurate or you know um, too much or too less, uh, depends on the machine. I already see a lot of values popping up. Yeah. So all the jacks, everything is tested right here. Yes, of course. So how long does it take to do a test like this? Uh, normally, uh, for one model, I mean, for one motherboard, it takes at least one day. A full day. A full day. For one model. For one model. So if there is a new yeah. range of motherboards. Yeah, you can imagine that. That's yeah. a lot of preparation of for the audio testing. Yeah. So what does this kind of device? How how does this work? Uh, yeah. Output. Okay. Uh, so, like so this is what you connect to the motherboard, and then you loop it. Yeah, yeah. You connect to the motherboard, the audio jack, and doing the looping testing, and go through with the machine, and to read out the data. Yes. And what kind of data do we see here? Because we see some percentages, some voltage. Okay, under the uh, safe uh, area, mm -hmm. uh, this is the reliable voltage output to the audio codec. Okay, yeah. so, so the audio chip on the motherboard is uh, on. Yes, yes. So for example, what people will know as uh, mm -hmm. ALC1220, for example, the high-end yes. audio codec. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, we saw some some audio testing there. So you know, audio boost, or you know, on our motherboards we have a lot of audio components, and and uh, we pride uh, pride ourselves that we actually have it's it's kind of like a dedicated sound card, but it's still part of the motherboard, right? Because it's yeah. separate PCB even. And here they yep. really test the values based on readings. You know, how pure is the audio signal that you actually get out? Something like that, right? Yeah. So these are extremely precise readouts. So even. Um malfunctioning that we wouldn't even be able to hear with the human eye they can over with human <laughs> <laughs> with your ear balls <laughs> <laughs> what did you say i couldn't see yeah. <laughs> it's late it's, it's midnight here it's yeah <laughs> it's exactly no not yet so that you wouldn't be able to pick up with the human ear you can uh, yeah. actually detect in this kind of uh, audio testing so even uh, malfunctioning on that level we can still um, yeah pick it up and fix it. Right. Numbers don't lie, basically. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, guys, it's uh, it's quite late there. So if you want to go and uh, get some sleep, that's OK. We'll, we'll take yeah, it from yeah. here. Yeah. It's already 12 o'clock there, right? Yeah. Night. Yeah. Uh, well, you... Still two minutes to go, but yes. Yeah. So, but uh, it's OK if you guys want to go. Um, well, we don't we'll... want to go, but tomorrow morning we have early morning again. Early well, morning, thing, again. Yeah. Uh, we don't we want to get blamed. Whole day meetings. You know, uh, it, it's it's that's... it's hashtag blame Eric, not hashtag blame Peter and Ja for keeping us up all night. So you know, <laughs> oh. let's not go there. <laughs> yeah. No, well, uh, yeah, we will. We are going to bed, and um, uh, yeah, we still have a lot of interesting stuff coming up. It's not only about main board or motherboard. Yeah. It's also about VJ. I think we we show you how to design a. Uh, GPU, how we test uh, the cooler, uh, PCB layout. Uh, we show you our... some more really cool testing facilities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Ones that a lot of people are not really aware of when buying a motherboard, like the way that it's tested. Audio might seem a bit obvious. Yeah, EMI uh, testing. EMI, for example, so yeah. I think, or um, but also, also, we show you our uh, canteen. Uh, we show you the roof. The view on the roof is amazing. Yeah. Uh, you can almost see the one on one. Actually, you can see it, but the weather was not that great. Um, what else? Oh, we show you our uh, gaming room. I mean, there is actually a gaming room in issue 
where the people doing lunch breaks play games. And yeah. we broke some stuff. You broke some stuff. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. As always. Uh, don't, don't spoil everything, guys. No, there are, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. People will, people will, all right, so that's what's coming Small up teacher. then. In that case, I don't need to see it. Uh, yeah. Leave something for us, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway. All right, yeah. so thank you guys for joining. Have a good sleep. Um, have a good night. Enjoy and, the live stream. Uh, we'll see you guys soon again here back in the studio then. Next week we are back again. Uh, yeah. And I hope, yeah, maybe, I hope not in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still a little bit jet lag. Yeah. Probably, yeah, but it's yeah, okay. okay. Anyway, so thank you guys also. Thank you a lot for uh, doing all the recordings, also for all the things yeah. still coming up. You're welcome. Um, cheers for, for going above and oh, beyond the call Peter. of duty. Uh, yes. We also we also found you in HQ. Oh my God! No, are you oh, so yeah, there's no, footage please. of that too. Are you? Are, are they still doing that meme? Yeah. <laughs> shall I? Shall I just quickly? It's a nice self promotion there, Peter. All right. Anyway, it's just we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I I, I kind of think I know what you're talking about, but uh, let's see. No, <laughs> let, let's just say your picture is on the wall. Oh my God! I thought the kind of says it already. So I'm still I'm still world famous in in our HQ. World famous in HQ, yes. <laughs> oh, it never goes away, does it? <laughs> next time, okay. next time, next time, yeah. you pose for the pictures, Eric. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're gonna take it from here. Have a good night, and we'll see you guys soon. See you. Bye. 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 Have a good sleep. Bye. Good night. All right. Uh, so you guys are now stuck with uh, just Ja me. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go look at some uh, some other uh, movies that they made. So uh, the next part, I believe, is about uh, graphics cards, if I'm correct. And uh, we're gonna get a little bit of a view of how PCB design is done. Um, so yeah, getting into the sexy stuff. Yeah, let's have a look. All right. Hey, Jerry. Hi. So um, this is about how we design a PCB for a VJ card. For yeah. a GPU, graphics card? Yes, uh, this part, uh, uh, the information you can see on the screen is the layout, wow. layout chart. And uh, you know, uh, we always uh, focus on the outside of the graphics card, but our engineer uh, is focusing on the uh, inside world. Yeah. So they always help us to check the uh, layout, uh, how, what is it good, what's bad. And uh, yeah. we can say the layout is the spirit of the Twix car. Yeah, so we, we basically when there's a new GPU out from uh, AMD or NVIDIA, mm -hmm. uh, we get a uh, reference PCB. Mm -hmm. uh, we take that and then we're going to modify it and design our own, right? Yes. Okay, so and most of the time this design is for more power phases, uh, better stability, mm -hmm. higher performance. And that's what they do here. Yes, of course. Okay, so it looks really... Really interesting. So this is the GPU part, right? Where we're yes, looking at uh, right now. Yeah, the central is the GPU part, and uh, uh, the surround the GPU is memory part. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. So, and he is now measuring all the different. So he's designing it, and then also testing parts, which work best. Yes, uh, our engineer is <coughs> testing the waveform uh, with the very special devices. Device, uh, the digital phosphor uh, oscilloscope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the device uh, help the engineer to taste the uh, waveform is good or is bad, and uh, so it's basically the signal strength, uh, the, the 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 length of the traces, and mm -hmm. the better the signal, yeah, the faster it can go, the higher it can go. Yeah. Uh, about the design, uh, not just uh, Nvidia but also AMD always provide uh, provide us a, a very strict or very uh, good rule. And, uh, so we, design guideline. Yeah, design guideline, and we use the device to test. Okay, uh, if the if our design is fit the rule or not. Yeah. Yeah. We uh we can check uh, uh the data or the information is between the range. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. more or less compatibility testing, or if it yeah. will work or not. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff there as well, you know, things we usually don't really consider. Uh, you know, we, we always see graphics cards from the outside these days, you know, the cooler, the fans, the backplate, uh, the connectors, you know, the, the, the I.O. panel, that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot that goes into the PCB design as well, as you could see. There's, uh, you know, 
it's usually built up of multiple layers as well. So there's a hell of a lot of stuff uh, going on. And like uh, I think Jerry said, you know, it's kind of like the, the spirit, the soul of the graphics card right there. Uh, we also have, of course, on a, a lot of our graphics cards, especially the higher end ones, they have um, custom designed PCB. So, of course, you know, AMD, NVIDIA, they will give a reference design PCB. So a lot of times uh, and a lot of graphics cards are just based on that blueprint, basically, that, that they get from, uh, from AMD and NVIDIA. Um, but our engineers always try to, especially for our gaming cards, for example, and cards like Lightning especially, um, those will always be, uh, our engineers will, will do their very best to optimize the trace layout even more, make sure the, the signal strength is really high. That's what the guy was actually also testing, you know, that if you uh, have the, the power feed uh, through the, the PCB, that the, the signal is actually clean and that you can really uh, see that, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the power signal is, is good. Um, so that's something we, we always try to improve as much as possible. Um, I see some people. Hello, Mr. Mastodox. Thank you for joining as well. Um, yes, uh, we also heard that the audio on YouTube is out of sync for some people. Um, please try our Twitch channel. Uh, I believe everybody is saying that Twitch is fine. So it seems to be a YouTube-related issue that uh, the audio seems to be not really synced with uh, video. So if it's really not doable, please go to Twitch and uh, that should make things better. Um, yeah, so a lot of interesting, interesting things there as well. Um, stuff, uh, s something that uh, actually we, we uh, cut out of the video there, but I, I did see is that uh, they also had like a, a little PCB there with a lot of wires there, and there was uh, something mounted where normally the the CPU or the GPU would be. Um, and basically, what they do there is they will simulate the stress that you know the power usage of the gpu will put on the pcb and and the the signal that has to be carried from the power input the the peg connectors uh, you know eight pins and stuff like that uh, to the gpu and they will be able to measure all the way from where the power comes into the card to where it's actually needed you know the the, the gpu for example or the memory all those different points they'll be able to measure and they will measure for every single card um how you know if the power signal is good if it's if it's clean uh, if it needs to improve um, so also a lot of work goes into that uh, and it's just one of the things that you know we wanted to show uh, normally you don't really get to see um, you know I, I believe you know thermal testing a lot of you know you you've probably seen some of that uh, a lot of our competitors have, have uh, images of that as well um, but this kind of work that really goes into the PCB and the traces yeah, you really don't really get to see that's really behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So we thought so it's nice is, to show so that. So this is like also like part of the process which makes uh, you know this kind of custom uh, customized boards perform yep. better, uh, yes. uh, more stable than yep. the reference ones. Yeah. Because it's not just you know if if you watch videos from uh, for example uh, what's his name again um, actually hardcore overclocking. Uh, you know, the, the guy he does uh, PCB analysis and you know he has a a, a lot of. Uh, uh, technical knowledge and he knows a lot about the components um, so he, he usually does an analysis just based on his knowledge of the components but uh, you know he, he doesn't really uh, at least in those videos he doesn't really uh, or he's not able to test it so you know it's it's hypothesis it's it's uh, on paper this is the conclusion it's good or it's bad or it's anywhere in between um, so what we do there it, in what you just saw was really you know taking the measurements and this you know I, i've seen him do that sometimes as well uh, which is great because then you actually have the numbers again numbers don't lie it's when you actually get the measurements that you know for sure how does it work how is the Im impedance or how is the signal um, so what you saw these guys doing here is actually doing the measurements and measuring the signal strength and uh, making sure it's optimized and it's good it's within uh, certain specs and uh, regulations so yeah, quite interesting, I thought. <laughs> Definitely. Not what you see every day. No, no, exactly. Well, actually... You I'm actually, really yeah, quite it. jealous at uh, Mike and uh, Eric, because I haven't been to HQ myself yet. No, no, yeah. No. Uh, you, you, yeah, you, you, we need to still get you on a plane and... Uh, and yep, uh, gonna make some time to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, just book a plane, just yeah. go. And also, we need to make sure that you also have a good excuse there to walk around and be exactly. nosy, you know? And I, say, I think hey, as what long as this guy doing over here? As long as I carry a camera, I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. People will stop asking me questions because nobody wants to be on, uh, on tape. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you so. might have noticed again, you know, here there were some people. Uh, I've seen some footage as well where people are actually like trying to jump out of the right. way. And in the first little movie as well, you can see it. As soon as the camera pans around, people will be like, whoa, I don't want to be in the video. Yeah, not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, let's go watch the next piece.
All right, let's go. Thank you. So right now, we're in the chambers of the MSI building, the first MSI building. Uh, as you can see, everyone parks their car or the scooter here. Um, but that's not the only thing that happens in this building because there's also the EMI chamber where we do all the EMI testing. Um, so I made an appointment with Henry, one of our uh, R&D engineers, and uh, he will explain us what happens there and how it works exactly. Hello, Henry. Yeah. So you had a party, I see they're still cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> Preparing now. So I'm here with Henry. You yep. might already know him from previous streams. He was answering your questions about all motherboard related kind of technical stuff. He's our R&D engineer here. Yep. So Henry, where are we? So basically we're in the signal and the last, uh, sorry, uh, the EMI lab. Is it safe to stand here in front of this? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty safe. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what happens in the EMI testing lab? So basically, uh, EMI testing is te uh, about the uh, signal of, of absorption mm -hmm. and also uh, how's the damage to the human body and also the uh, signal uh, waveform and uh, how it works for the whole PC, the whole system, mm -hmm. and in including the uh, motherboard, VGA car, everything inside the PC. So that's also to make sure if you have like any radiation that it doesn't impact yeah. the components? Yeah, of course. And what can happen? If it doesn't pass, for example, what happened? Uh, our engineering team will fine tune the component uh, each by each, uh, either by hardware solution or also uh, the BIOS. And maybe BIOS also has influence also. on the yeah. yeah. How does that work? It's like, uh, for example, the USB. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there's a USB spectrum. Uh, you can uh, fine tune the the value, the parameter by BIOS. So to make sure the uh, the signal, the radiation. Uh, uh, to pass the standard. And I see a lot of stuff on the walls. Yeah. What does that do? Uh, let me ask our expert. Hey, Darren. Sorry. Hey, welcome. Hey, yeah, Darren, this is Darren. So, uh, hey, Darren. can you tell me what the white blocks do for the EMI testing? The white the Okay. So basically, the white blocks just protecting the uh, absorber. absorber testing. Mm -hmm. Can we touch it? <laughs> I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you just did, yeah, yeah. Very good. So we have it everywhere, only not on this side. And here we see a big machine. And this causes the radiation, or how does this, this work? This uh, how we send, how we send our energy, mm -hmm. energy signal okay. outside labor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so they are over there, but I'm in the control room. So over here I can push up, and you see the antenna is moving up. And down, oh, oh, stop, stop. Yeah, I'm not sure, will it? I don't know, maybe it will go through the roof. <laughs> Just trolling a little bit, trying to uh, mess up their interview. Super fine. So this is the control room. They have a lot of specialized equipment. I really don't know what this is for, um, but uh, in the end, it's for EMI testing. So you would take the uh, the signal uh, mm -hmm. outside of the, the this chamber. Yeah, and they will uh, send out the message or the uh, signal to the, uh, of course, the data into the PC to analyze the Are we radiation. still safe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, still. So this collects a lot of data and that you use to, do, yeah. for example, to make it pass or that it fails. Yes. And then it's a different position signal outside the PC. Check a different position signal to no, no, no high. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. So how the different uh, radiation types influence the human body, for example? Yeah. Yeah, because basically uh, there's a uh, uh, five or six phases of the one PC. Mm -hmm. So every phase, every position, for example, the backside of the motherboard, there's a lot of uh, 
connector and jacks to make sure the uh, radiation won't, you know, going too high. Yeah. yeah. Then that's the what they do in the EMI. First. Yeah. All right. So uh, EMI testing. Uh, yeah. Quite interesting stuff. I see a lot of people <coughs> also in the chat. Uh, he's radiating them. I mean, that, that's typical Eric. I mean, that that's exactly what Eric is like in real life as well. Uh, you know, he'll he'll find ways yep. to play practical jokes or stuff troll like that. Troll has got a troll. Uh, in in this in this case, uh, he also he did it in a way that he could show you know from the outside they're actually. Uh, what it was is that was the uh, the uh, antenna that actually uh, receives or measures the radiation. So it's not something that actually uh, beams radiation uh, on the rotating table that you saw there. That's where they will place you know the, the product that they're testing, so a, a motherboard or a whole PC or a monitor or whatever, um, and they will rotate it because from different angles the radiation will be different. That's why they rotate it. Um, and then that big antenna that you saw Eric moving and trolling a bit. That's actually what captures uh, the radiation levels and, and will register it. And so that's the device actually basically that will tell, is it within spec, the radiation, or is it, you know, is there anything to be worried about? Do we need to check something? Uh, is there anything, you know, abnormally going on here in terms of radiation? Um, the, the, the white panels you saw on the wall, that those are basically just absorbers, so they uh, will absorb any other radiation just so that everything is focused towards the, the big antenna, the big receiver. Um, but indeed, it did look like a very secret room. Uh, I mean, it's it, like yeah, all it, the it, way yeah, on the ground. And, and it's, you know, a lot of people also said, oh, I was in the basement. And yes, exactly. So that's, uh, there are, I think, two levels of parking as well in, in uh, underneath the MSI uh, headquarters. So you saw a lot of cars there, some nicer than others, uh, as it is with, with most companies. Um, and, you know, it's just one of the rooms where, you know, if you want to make a room where there's like as little interference as possible, um, because I, uh, yeah, I see some people, why, why, why is this room under underground, basically? Why is it placed there and not like, you know, somewhere in the middle of the office? Because you have less interference there. It's not, it's not on a floor with, you know, where all kinds of people are working on, on laptops and whatever, where, where Wi-Fi signals are, are just, you know, being beamed everywhere. So... Um, these rooms are a bit more secluded. Uh, they are, I believe, at least two levels or, or one level below where the first office floor is. So that's one of the reasons. And also you saw in the room it was lined with metal uh, padding, basically, with, with metal uh, squares, which is also, of course, to uh, isolate any kind of signals even more so that it's really, in terms of radiation, and, and you know, if you want to take out your cell phone in that room, uh, you should have no reception whatsoever. It should be completely uh, free of any kind of uh, radiation there. Uh, so to really be able to isolate what does this product do. And that's important because, you know, these products need to be tested so that we know, uh, well, what is the effect, how, how strong is the radiation, and is it within certain limits that are allowed by, I don't know, for example, in Europe or in, in the U.S. You know, there are every uh, continent, even some countries have their own specifications. Um, so yeah, just to make sure it's it's compliant with all of them. Sounds very complicated. It is, and again, it's a lot of testing and but something you, you very sure. often don't really see, but it is going on. Uh, and I do believe, I mean, like Eric and Mike said before as well, I do believe this is, you know, they're just showing the older testing equipment. So uh, even for this room, there will probably be a more high-tech and a much newer mm, room yeah. as well somewhere. Which will be confidential once again. Yeah, yeah, which we can't show. We're not allowed to show because it's all, you know, confidential and, uh, yeah. Some, some yeah, but at least, you know, at least they get an idea now. Yeah, I mean, the idea is the same. Uh, it's basically the same. It's just, uh, yeah, the room might be a bit different. The equipment used might be a bit different. Maybe it's even more sensitive or uh, easier to pick out signals. Um, yeah, so, again, something we just wanted to show you that... Uh, is going on in the background, which you probably don't even know about. I haven't seen it neither, so. Yeah, well, I good, did see Gamers see. Nexus do a video about, I believe, the, this room, and they also had, uh, uh, we have a, an, an audio testing room where, uh, or acoustics, or, you know, stuff like that. So it's a room where you have, like, I think it's like inflated or foam spikes coming out of the wall and, and the ceiling, just, you know, make sure that any sound is immediately just, you know, stopped. It, it, mm -hmm. There's no. Uh, echo there whatsoever, so your voice will sound weird. Gamers Next had a nice video about this as well. Um, I believe they tried to do this uh, this room. They tried to record in there as well, 
but you you have to remember that these uh, rooms are actually in use still so at the time that they were trying to film it uh, the audio room at least it was uh, not available because it was being used for actual testing um, so yeah they weren't able to go in there and, and shoot a video unfortunately but they were able to do a couple of other areas so uh, yeah we can uh, we can look into that right now if you want <laughs> Uh, before we do that, by the way, maybe it's a nice time to do another giveaway. Great idea. This one actually being done by us. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I'll try to see who the next winner is. Yeah. And so well, if you still want to participate, you can go to www.msi.com slash two slash insider, as you can see right above my head here. Or you can follow the link that's being posted by our bot every few minutes um, directly to the giveaway. Uh, you have to participate uh, to uh, win, of course, and uh, to participate, basically, you just have to perform a few actions, uh, like, subscribe, that kind of stuff to, to several channels. The more actions you complete, the more chance you have to win. And uh, Jai is now going to initiate a script that completely randomly just chooses a winner out of all the submissions that we got today. <clears throat> Our next winner is... We have a next winner. Uh, and the next winner is... D2, D4. D2, D4. Congratulations. I think I, I, think, I just see him in the in, in the chat there going, say... Ah, he's oh, doing yeah, the memes. Oh, he's there right there, yeah. Oh. Congratulations. Well, congratulations, D2, D4. Yeah, hope you can have fun with a Steam yeah. wallet code and get a, something nice for Christmas, maybe. Yeah, so you win a $20 <laughs> Steam wallet code and we'll send it out to you uh, before the end of the week so you can, uh, yeah, you can spend it yeah. on something nice. <clears throat> And the rest of you, maybe you still have chances after this. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there will don't be worry. more codes to be given away today. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, still see if you can get lucky today. All righty. Not this lucky, though. This one, this one's staying right here. No, he's just enjoying some music. Yeah, leave him alone. All right. Let's go so, to the next, uh, next move. All righty. So right now, we're walking to our ESD room, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. A big door. Just look at how thick this is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's cold in here. Whew. Yeah, it's Why cold. is that? <laughs> ah, because uh, this is an ESD lab. So, so ESD is electrostatic discharge. Yeah, what exactly. is that exactly? Uh, so this is testing about the uh, how's the damage or the impact uh, from the uh, static to the human body and also the PC component. So there, our engineering team will do the whole testing, a bunch of the testing in this room. So that's sometimes, for example, if you touch something metal, the spark you yeah, get, right? Yeah, the spark, yeah. And why is it so cold in here? Uh, because uh, this is the whole environment to uh, simulate the static. So uh, just imagine the static uh, normally will happen under a very cold and a dry environment. So, so that's also in winter. Yeah, when yeah. you come home, you have that sooner than in summer, for example. Yeah, that's a daily life. So I see a lot of equipment here. Yep. So what is simulated uh, uh, to get Maybe this? we can start from this. Uh, PC. So this is basically uh, our, uh, you know, like a testing bed mm -hmm. uh, using the static gun uh, to simulate how the uh, situation will happen when the static gun touch it. And so we see a motherboard and a graphics and card. And motherboard, inside. graphics card, all the components inside the PC. So basically you must need to have a chassis. So, so with this gun, yeah, we, with that we, can, gun we can shock the PC. Yeah, please. <laughs> You can. Yeah, can I try? Yeah, you, you try, please. Okay, so I just press the button. Yeah, and hit press it. the button and contact. Ooh, and release it. So did I? Did I break it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. And here I okay. see a lot of controls, and that's also to um, define the current you put on it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, our motherboard, VJ car, or e e even our OEM customer required mm -hmm. a basic uh, ESD testing. So we set up this room for the requirement. So like you shock the components pretty much and then yeah. you see if it still works or how do you do the testing? Yes, exactly. So it's just testing. Does it pass? Does it still completely function? Yeah, does, does it pass? If that passed and also uh, working normally mm -hmm. after the testing, then it's done. All right. Yeah, so ESD testing. Uh, Electrostatic discharge. Uh, probably you guys will know it, like uh, you know, if you rub stuff and, and yeah. or a balloon on your hair, you a know, balloon your hair always works. It, or and then you, you touch somebody, will like, you know, the, the spark will fly and it will hurt one person or the other or both. It can um, really catch you by surprise sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But this this uh, also happens to a lot of components. You know, in the past, uh, this was really a thing where you had to watch out because if it happened, if you were, for example, building a, or assembling a PC and you, you 
actually shocked your one of your components, uh, it could really mean that it was from that point on damaged beyond repair and you know it was really broken. Um, these days, a lot of our components uh, and products are um, treated with certain you know, materials to, to actually resist this kind of uh, shocks. And this is one of the labs that they use to, uh, to test it, you know, to make sure that, uh, all right, so what, what happens to these components if they actually get shocked with electrostatic discharge? Um, do they indeed get damaged? Uh, which parts get damaged? Because it could be that it's just, you know, the, the coating that they applied uh, just didn't quite reach to a certain area or certain uh, components are still vul vulnerable to it. So you want to catch that, of course, before it actually happens to one of you guys. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what this lab does and yeah. what you saw Mike doing with the uh, his lightning gun there. <laughs> but pretty cool. Again, something you don't really see. Uh, also quite interesting. I didn't know, but it kind of makes sense. So they keep the room also as uh, cold and especially dry as possible. So the, the, the humidity there is as low as possible, which is not easy in Taiwan because Taiwan, Taipei, you know, it's, it's quite humid there usually. Uh, it's, it's more like a tropical climate, so you can imagine, and it's also- it's an <laughs> That's island, why it's so, so warm in the winter. <laughs> yeah, so the, you know, normally outside there, it's very humid. Um, so, you know, the, these rooms, they try to keep uh, a controlled environment and make sure it's, uh, it's you know, as, as, as likely to create static electricity as possible. So they, they create the, the most basically damaging uh, environment and they, they simulate that and they just see, okay, so how does that go? Just to make sure that when you assemble something at home in your PC and you do accidentally get an electrostatic discharge, uh, you have as little chance as possible that something actually is gets damaged. So um, yeah, also quite a nice yeah. touch. See a lot of people uh, what, asking, by the way, uh, especially on YouTube, about who was the winner. Uh, the the winner of the last uh, giveaway uh, this stream was. Uh, it was uh, D2D4. R, 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 yeah, R2D2. No, I don't know. D2D4. Yeah, D2D4. <laughs> D2 D4. Um, so, yeah, but we have more codes to give away, like we just mentioned already. Uh, also, if you just joined us on YouTube and you're having audio sync issues, uh, Apparently, some people are having these issues. Seems to be mostly um, on YouTube. On YouTube, you can always go to our Twitch channel, uh, which is uh, go to twitch.tv and should be MSI Gaming, um, and then you'll you can follow the stream there. Though there, it should not really have any audio sync issues. So yeah, I also regularly doable. just post the direct link to our channel in the chat anyway, <coughs> so uh, you can also keep uh, keep track of the chat. Yeah, uh, get to the link. So uh, yeah, I mean that was one of uh, again one of the uh, the labs doing uh, some of the testing. Um, let's see what else Mike and Eric were up to. Uh, Ooh, let's see this week. more fun stuff. Yep. Hey, hey Anthony, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey. So we're now in the SA testing room, right? Yeah. And you know everything about this. Yeah. So where are we? What do you do here? Well, do, uh, to, vis to verify the MSI Pro dielectrical signal interpreter. So okay. electrical, electrical signal for all kinds of standards, right? Yeah, for the old product, like the Malibu, Noble, VGA car, and the Enterprise product. Cool. So I see a lot of equipment here. Yeah. So maybe we can just go around yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, and yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it easy. So I see some USB device here. Yeah. So this It looks like a big USB stick with some antennas. Okay, <laughs> let me introduce it for you. This is test feature for USB uh, 3.0 signal protein verified. Okay. okay. And so we use the this test feature connected to the test DUT and uh, then operate this in the equipment to, ver to verify the receiver signal quality. So okay. you just connect it to the motherboard, and then you get a whole lot of data but on that device. You uh, we still need to configure the sun parameter, but that's not important. Mm -hmm. So and the, uh, for simple for connect with the duty that operate then operate the test equipment, then the signal will be go through the the test feature into the equipment. The equipment to do the sun calculator, then to could get the receive a signal like, uh, how, how to say, the, for the bit error rate, to counter mm -hmm. the bit error rate. If the error rate is uh, very small and equal to a zero, then we, can, we know the DUT receiver signal is good, quality is very good. 
And what happens if the bit error rate is too high? Like if the bit error too high, like I speak the one two three to you, mm -hmm. but you hear is oh, one two blah 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 then so. Less the sync. So you're missing yeah, data. Yeah, message, yeah, yeah, the message error. Okay. So like you see this the Tektronix equipment. So you see that in the, this room have a lot of it. Like so these data. are all connectors that you can attach to the testing equipment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is USB, but you do a lot oh, more no, no, signal this, this testing. This function right? is multi-function. Like oh, this to is multi-function. the USB, PCIe, and the SATA. So also yeah. PCI Express. But then you need something different than this, right? Yeah, to use a different test feature. So what do we see here? Here, uh, here is uh, to uh, this is the server product. Mm -hmm. So we can like maybe we set that in here. Uh, we have used two equipment to verify the high Ethernet signal interpreted. So what is the high uh, high a uh, high speed uh, Ethernet? Like you know the one hundred gig mm -hmm. or the data center. And uh, this machine is latest in this machine. We just come to the MSI in, uh, before last week. Uh, so, so this is completely new. Yeah. So we use this machine to verify the 400 key, the uh, 400 key is an single party. So uh, all, uh, in the future, we also can use this one to verify the 800 key. So that's very fast. So it's maybe amazing. It's already future-proof equipment. Yeah, very future equipment. All right. So, I don't know. Uh, have you ever felt the need for that mm. much speed? Well, it's, it, I can't imagine. They, they can. I can't so, imagine. So, so, so let's recap just for a second. So that was the lab where they test, you know, also a lot of signal strength, just like audio uh, that we saw earlier in the audio lab. Uh, but here it's it's more like you know USB and and uh, other type of connectors. Uh, but also Ethernet and, and PCIe, for example. Um, and the last bit we saw was, you know, again, we, we don't just make uh, uh, consumer products, uh, but we also make, you know, yeah. more more uh, enterprise, so, so data center solutions. Um, and for those, you know, those are running on a whole different level. You know, we are, you know, our motherboards now have what, a, a 10, 10, was the max. 10 gigabit, I think, that, that's just coming up, right? That, that's yeah. quite high speed. Um, of course, data centers need to be a lot faster even, so they are uh, already going at like 100 gigabit uh, connections. Yeah, the big leak. <laughs> yeah, well, you would say that, but uh, you know, that means that this, this machine that they were just showing at uh, the last part, it could easily do, you know, measure up to speeds up to 400 gigabit and even 800 gigabit. That's like freaking next level. Imagine if I had that speed at home. Oh, who, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. I, I don't know how, how fast, you know, within how many years we can kind of expect that. Again, it's more for data center solutions. But if yeah. you see the type of speeds that they're handling there, that's just wow. Um, you know, if we ever reach those kinds, if we ever even get to 100 gig uh, <laughs> speeds at home, that's already like... That's way too fast. Yeah, I, I'll be uh, more than happy with that for now, that's, especially. You know, any any kind of uh, any kind of big file, a movie or whatever you want to just done. That's yep. that's the speed we're talking here. It's like seconds or even milliseconds, maybe. Mm, I mean, of course, there are a lot of situations where this would be really appreciated. It's just mo most of the time, you know, yeah. you don't really need this at home. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, most yeah, indeed. I see some people saying, you know, here I am, Baltic Seal. Here I am with my 10 MB upload at home. <laughs> Again, you know, m most people indeed have download speeds at the moment rated in Mbit, not gigabit, you know, upload and download speeds. So this is just so far ahead, uh, but it's really cool to see again. And uh, yeah, I, I see what you're doing there, painful split. I, I, that's a really nice meme there. At that speed, Stadia might just work. <laughs> nice, nice meme, yeah. Well, a lot of know, troubles there, yeah. It, it is, uh, to be fair, you know, uh, uh, Stadia is quite an interesting concept. Um, it's just got a lot of technological hurdles that it needs to cross, and that's also why pretty much nobody else, not even Nvidia or you know all the other big uh, companies, Google as well, of course, with Stadia, have tried to do this in the past. And you can do it in a controlled environment. You can you can make it work reasonably well, but you know for 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 you know, for it to be feasible for pretty much everybody, uh, no matter where you are, even with slow connect connections in rural, rural areas, you know, that's just really difficult. And uh, I mean, 
respect that they're trying it, but it, it's not really, you know, we were really also watching it going, uh, if, if they actually did this and if they actually made it work, holy crap, that's, that's no small feat. <laughs> yeah. uh, so but, you can say you that. Know, it was, it, on the other hand, it was also kind of, well, I don't know, we, we have expected that it's just not possible yet for a lot of people. And it's just because of the, you know, the network limitations and, and that kind of stuff. There's just so much to overcome. Um, it, it's not really a feasible concept yet, especially if you're used to having your own PC uh, at home and especially at, at certain game types, you know, shooters, the, the lag, the, the input lag, and then and just the general lag is just too high. Yeah. So for yeah. most people, it's not interesting yet. Yeah, but I guess, you know, they made a start. So from here on, it's only, yeah, improvements, yeah. improvements, improvements. Yeah. And yeah. who Let's knows where it goes. Where yeah, it goes. Give it a couple of years, who knows. But, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Painful split says, yeah, it's, but it's, it's, it's definitely, interesting, but the internet's just not. But there. I would definitely still prefer to have, you know, my own yes. sexy setup that I made myself, you know, sitting at home, exactly. staring at me, because, yeah. you know, yeah. I make this. Yeah, I made this. I make this. And, and I can modify it anytime exactly. I want. You know, that kind of freedom. It's it's also tangible, you know. It's, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And when your friends come, come by, you know, uh, they'll also be like, damn, you made this. I, I guess <laughs> in, in, in a couple of years or maybe 10, 20 years, you know, people will start calling us old people because we, you know... <laughs> We, we want the, the like the physical stuff. It's yeah. like with music, right? You know, we grew exactly. up and you had you know CDs or whatever. Cassette and you this is, CD uh, and yeah, the was, tapes. Even with games, you know, I still have like a whole wall full of games I once bought, where you oh. know DVDs and stuff. I, I can't, really, I've never used them anymore because these days I think you can't I, download I, games. I already lost most of them already. Yeah, but I mean, this used to be a thing, right? And for a lot of people, yeah, it's still like I mean, a collectible or you, you want something physical. It's, definitely, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, I definitely have a lot more feelings towards my own hardware than something that I yeah. can't even touch, you know, it's just somewhere in the clouds. Yeah, yeah. So. It's, it's, it's nostalgic as well. Yeah, it's, it's also self-rewarding because you know you made something that's going to perform either really well or yeah. not well because you didn't... You, you made a thing. Yeah, <laughs> you, you actually really did, really did. You made a thing. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, the burn-in lab, right? Yeah, yeah, burn-in lab. Okay, so um, what do we do over here? Uh, mostly uh, we're doing this uh, stable, reliable testing for a whole uh, platform, including the motherboard, CPU, and okay. the component over there. So what is this? Uh, it's a, like an internal tooling card for the BIOS flashing. Yeah, you know? We don't... What is another uh, way to doing the BIOS flashing? Okay, or yeah. also some SI, some ah. debugging code. Okay, so every, everywhere there is a, I see a, a PCB. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just, just, no, you just know. some uh, stand. Okay, so just some stand, SSD, memory. Yeah. And then we do, uh, is it validation or really burn-in? A burning validation, I would say. Okay. Yeah, yeah for and the 24-7 uh, uh, long-term testing. Okay. Yeah. Make sure the reliability. Yeah. So, and each uh, mainboard uh, gets here. So each different model. Gets uh, yeah. Here? Each different models and the platforms and uh, by chipsets and by uh, top to uh, top end, high, middle, low. Yeah. And what kind of one. benchmark do we run? Uh, mostly we have a 3D mark uh, mm -hmm. and shutdown reboot and S copy yeah. and some uh, like firm, firm mark reliability okay. long term testing. Oh, firm mark, that's a heavy one. Yeah. It's like a torture. Yeah, like a torture. Yeah. And uh, how long do we run this? Is this like 10 minutes or? Oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, take uh, three mark, for example, we run uh, 24 hours. 24 hours? 24 hours. 24 okay. hours. And each item uh, would be like a half day or one day long, but mostly one model, uh, it takes at the least two weeks. Okay, so here testing. we have some uh, models. Well, they're not, they're not running right now. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is our uh, MPG Z390 Gaming Plus. Yes. And I see like eight different ones. Any reason for that? Yeah. Uh, from our uh, testing plan, we set up eight uh, platforms, mm -hmm. and eight systems. For each eight? For each eight. Okay. Yeah, one, mo one model, eight system yeah. for different configuration. Ah, for example, okay. for, example uh, for the memory, uh, we can put a two, two ding slots or yeah. four ding slots. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. And some, uh, some of the uh, graphics card or without graphics card. Yeah. yeah. 
And then we also do AMD or uh, and uh, AMD. Nvidia. Yeah, AMD and Nvidia. Yeah, I see even uh, CD-ROM optical. Yeah, of course it's uh, you know quite a legacy, but still it's yeah. uh, a necessary part. Okay, cool. So and here I see some. Uh, oh yeah, it's our quite high-end one. Yeah, TRX Creative. 40. Creative. TRX 40. Yeah. So this just released and uh, yeah, it's on the market and still doing some testing here. Oh uh, yeah, uh, because. After market, uh, yeah. we're still doing some uh, like uh, uh, debugging and okay. some uh, patches from so, BIOS and hardware. Yeah, okay, so to fine tune your BIOS. So if we get some some uh, uh, comments uh, or complaints from uh, customers, yeah, um, then here we are going to do. So we are going to fine tune the BIOS and then here mm -hmm. validate again if yeah. everything runs fine. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we duplicate the issue and then we find out the solution yeah. and do it validation again. Okay. I also see some water cooling. Yeah. So also water cooling uh, testing? Yeah, because you know uh, high core count CPU is coming out uh, yeah. a lot more, so water cooling is kind of uh, like a requirement. And 1200 watt power supply, so yeah. a lot of high-end equipment. Sure. Okay, cool to see. All right, so yeah, I mean there we saw uh, what, what they call burn-in validation testing, or basically, you know, reliability and then uh, making sure that stuff is tested it doesn't just uh, go out of the factory straight into the box to you but most of the time they actually uh yeah run it for a certain amount of time i think graphics cards they even run 48 hours uh, of a torture test to make sure uh, you know there are no problems and everything runs fine and uh, there are no issues um very interesting i think is also you know they said uh, it's not just you know they, they take one product and and just put one configuration there for each product they have eight different configurations and they mix stuff up um, just so that they can kind of try to cover a lot of different scenarios that you would be able to use that product and to verify that it runs stable for 24 hours or, or multiple days in that scenario. Um, and also, uh, like you just saw Eric doing uh, or seeing there was a product that was just out. So even if it's not just before the product comes to market, even if the product is, is already on the market, and you know sometimes people find issues with it so of course then our bios team or whoever can provide a fix will work on it and it needs to be re-evaluated of course so it needs to be revalidated test run again just to make sure does it work yes or no so yeah there's a lot of procedures and a lot of work that goes into each different um yeah each separate update or or you know if you see you know you might have seen sometimes that you get oh, oh uh, i guess my my motherboard has a has an updated bios Okay, maybe you have issues, then you'll, you'll update it. If you don't have issues, you probably don't even have to do it, but a lot of people will just update it. But they never really think about, okay, how, does it, how did this update actually, you know, why, why is this here? Why do I get yeah. an update? People usually don't read the notes uh, that's coming with an update. Well, and even if they do, it's, it's, you know, it's good. I think it's good to know that it's not just something that our guys, you know, wrote up some code and thought, well, Theoretically, that should fix it. Yeah. No, they actually went through a lot of procedures to verify <clears throat> does it work, yes, no. There, that's not to say that, that it's like, you know, fully 100% because you can't uh, really make sure that, that everything works always. There, there might always be possibilities where, you know, certain combinations will cause problems. But again, if they are reported, then our team will yeah. work on it. To it fix is again. a very complex yeah. process. Yeah. And it's very a never complex. ending story really as well. Yeah. That's, the th that's the thing about it because there will always be situations where I saw some some guy asking uh, Darooks also is the BIOS protected against malware? That's another thing, you know. If they, uh, I think in, Intel, you know, uh, was it a couple of years ago already was it with the, you know they had the meltdown of Spectre that kind of. So when they do um, find any kind of you know vulnerabilities backdoors, that's again something that they will work on to to, to patch it out to make sure that it's no longer a vulnerability. So yeah, if they do find something like that they will do uh, they will fix it and they will validate it as, as much as they can and then they'll publish it so you guys can actually get it and uh, and apply it yeah now uh, let's see if there's any other a lot of people who, who said yeah. i would love to work there yeah me too um yeah it's very interesting uh, i agree so you're really gonna uh, know what you're doing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> better get that degree yeah all right so yeah maybe let's uh, let's look at the, the next part Let's go. Zero hours. So that's Zero good. hours. So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. And also saw something interesting here: a wooden test chamber. Yes. 
So what is that? And well, no. so a lot of it's minus cooking. 10 degrees from the yeah. house. And you do you do cooking or how? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, we duplicate the council. Mm -hmm. see. So how does this door open? Yeah. So I saw a lot of pizza ovens here. Yeah, and also can doing the pasta. <laughs> oh, also pasta. Okay. Yeah. So still floppy drive. <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid that this uh, like Lexi chamber uh, machine. So okay. So normally uh, they use the floppy for the so data. This is also burn in or cooking or <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what is this? Uh, ideally, you would put the uh, motherboard or the complete system inside the chamber. Okay. And doing so the temperature, here. doing the temperature and the humidity testing. Yeah. Like a high temperature with the high humidity. So this is 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And 96% humidity. Humidity, yes. Whoa. Yeah, that's a, we can set up the uh, configuration we want. Okay. Yeah. And why is this important for the models? Because we sell multiple or system worldwide. Yeah. So uh, depend on the different temperature and the local environment. Uh, normally the, the climate. Oh, and, and of course we have to simulate the weather yeah. locally. So if we, for example, we have uh, the, the um, uh, game boost, yeah. Yeah, the, the dial on some main board, yeah. and we claim, hey, this can do, for example, 5 gigahertz or something, overclock. Then, if we make that claim, we also make sure it's, mm, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a valid claim. Yeah. So it's worldwide. It's not like, yeah, it's yeah in Holland you can do 5.1, <laughs> and in, uh, in Taiwan yeah, you can not. do uh, yeah, only yeah. 4.9. Yeah, that's the point, that's the point. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's what they do here. Okay. Okay, cool. So I see different sizes. Different sizes and just matter uh, about... Can I open uh, one up? Yeah, Just please. to check. I see a lot of cables sticking out. Yes, yeah, so read out the, uh, the data from the PC. Ah, okay. And we have a kind of, uh, kind of a sensor and thermocouple inside. Ah, so these are the thermocouples. Yeah. So they're all going to some data readout and a machine. With the machine. Yeah. And because uh, the thermocouple, uh, we have to... Uh, manually to stick on the uh, PC. Very thin. Looks yeah. like spaghetti. We're cooking spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure we, we read out the accurate data. Ah, okay. So and, and each of these these cables are on a different like on the on the on the PCH, yeah. on the CPU, the PCH, on the, the MOS, VRM. the chipset, everywhere you you want to. Okay. Know. Yeah. Yeah. But this one is not on. That's why I could open it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But here we have one running. Okay. Yeah. Kason. So it's like minus, is that correct? Yep, there's a minus. So like oh. I said, maybe in winter and uh, Nordic, yeah, that's the weather they... So it's minus 10 degrees, let's say minus, minus 10 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no humidity. No humidity. Okay. It's very dry. I should not touch it because otherwise I bring no, stuff again. No, static again. <laughs> okay, so a lot of RGB LEDs inside. Yep. And, and how long does this test run? Uh, depends. Normally, uh, we do it uh, two days. At the two base. days? Yeah, two days. Okay. So over here you see what are we testing? Normally uh, we're doing the burning test. Very uh, stressful uh, full loading. I see some system. batch file running. Yeah. And file then, compare. Yeah. And the burning test indeed. Burning test, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and so no errors. Zero errors. So that's Zero good. errors. So far so good. Yeah. Yeah. And also saw something interesting here, a wooden test chamber. Yes. So what is that? And that is, uh, you know, like uh, uh, more realistic testing in the wooden chamber. For at home? For at home. Okay. Yeah. So normally we were doing the ambient 35 Celsius degree. Okay, 35 degrees. Yeah. Well, not anymore, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks okay. for your time, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Jerry, hey, how nice are you? you. Hey. Good to see you. So, this is VJ uh, cooking, right? Uh, the VJ, uh, the chamber for VJ testing. Ah, okay. Yeah. So we have a uh, what is it? The Ventus inside? Yeah. Uh, we are testing the uh, twenty seventy uh, Ventus, and uh, you can see the screen. Yeah. If you wanna get some more detailed information or data, yeah, you can see the screen. And okay. So these are all the different temperatures from all the. Thermal couples, right? Because yes. I see here a lot of cables. Yeah, the thermal sensors. 
yeah, yeah. So this we put on a VJ card. Yes. Like you have the one there. Yeah. Uh, this one is a 2080 Ti Ventus, and okay. uh, you can see we put a lot of uh, thermal sensors on the VJ car. Yeah. Yeah. We put a. Uh, on the GPU, and memory, and uh, power phase, and uh, uh, chalk and uh, capacitors, and uh, some uh, any com uh, component we we think is very important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then uh, uh, we can have a clear readout of everything. It's uh, ooh, it's hot. Well, it's very hot. Yeah. And so, then, what temperature are we running? Thirty-seven degrees. Yeah. Over there. Yes, over here. Yeah. And this one is uh, 2070 uh, Ventus, and you can see uh, a lot of the cable. Yeah. yeah the sensor on this uh, Graves car. Also on the outside, so it's not only on the on the technical components on the PCB, but also on the cooling itself. Yes. Uh, the sensor uh, we put uh, between the thermal and the PCB. Yeah, and uh, some we do some uh, special work uh, on the chalk. And GPU and make it very close to the, to the surface. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you can see the. Uh, oh, the some some small, cookies, yeah, chips or snacks, something. Yeah. Snacks, yeah. Yeah, uh, in Taiwan, uh, we have a very special culture. Yeah. Uh, if you hope uh, all the testing uh, running smoothly, yeah, we always put uh, something uh, green yeah, <laughs> on the system ah, or cool. in the chamber. Yeah. I thought it was for an engineer if they're bored to have something to eat. <laughs> if you're hungry. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah. Um, you saw a lot of temperature t testing, you know, ranging from very high temperatures to very low. And it's just, again, to make sure that no matter what environment you live in, if you, if you live in Antarctica or something where it's yeah. minus temperatures or Siberia, or you know in, in Saudi Arabia or, or you know one of the hottest regions where it's very dry or, or even very humid like ta Taiwan uh, that no matter the environment you, you put it in it works as intended and as advertised so yeah quite useful I saw some people saying hey I saw that I've got the Ventus like that which was running in the background um, yeah and, and also something that I, I don't know if you guys know this but if you've been to uh, Taiwan or Taipei um, these little things that these little quirks that showed up at the end where where jerry said um maybe you saw you know the little packet packet of food uh, mm. laying in in the oven there it wasn't just because uh, uh somebody who thought well you know it's it's hot so i might as well use it to to heat my food um this is actually you know for good luck it's like a good luck charm um and you tend to see this a lot in um in in taipei which is something you know you don't always expect because these guys you know a lot of these guys are very technical and they're very you know they're brilliant engineers they can just explain mm -hmm. everything to you they know everything about all the technical stuff and still there's there's like yeah, a, a very surprising yeah. contrast yeah there's this like contrast this of science you know, of, of, and there this this is superstition yeah, yeah. superstition or, or luck you know luck. there's a factor of luck or something that you know hope nothing goes wrong something like that it's yeah it's quite funny to see um and yeah it's it's I don't know, it's, it's something I you don't it's, really It's expect. quite typical for Asia in general, I think. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's quite funny. So, issue. yeah, we're, we're not, again, also, we, we try to show that stuff. We're not trying to hide it. Uh, because, again, I think it adds just a little bit of flavor. You can really see the type of people and, and the, you know, the type of company, basically, that, yeah. that we are that produces this. It's not just, you know, a factory and there's no soul there. It's like the, these are people doing this. And, uh, yeah, some of them have, have their... their superstitious things that they really think you know it's just for good luck i, I believe I, I i'm not sure if this is true but i heard something Na nasa people at nasa used to do this as well right they also had some uh stuff where uh yeah i've heard about the good luck uh, the good luck charms yeah yeah, yeah they also yeah. had like these good luck charms that they would do just you know to make sure that or you know i don't know I just, just to feel sure better how about using a, a launch or whatever uh, yeah i don't exactly know what it was but you know again you you see you tend to see this at, at very high levels of, of sophistication and, and technical engineering and stuff yeah the there is still are... something that you know we just seeking hope. something behind yeah you know yeah. they they will of course try to do everything as well as they can but there's always like an off chance something might go wrong i i guess yep. maybe that's that's why and it's you know you can't always control all the variables um yeah but it was quite funny to see uh for me uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you I, didn't, really I, didn't, I didn't expect that in the workflow no, no no um all right i think we have even more stuff lined up uh yep
Yeah, so let's uh, let's go to the next part. So uh, this is the second building uh, from MRI HQ. So in this building, uh, you have a lot of departments, as you can see here. So we have a logistics department, uh, industrial design. So industrial, that's the IPC motherboards for like cash registers, etc. Notebook BU, later we will go here, very interesting. Um, then notebook R&D, a lot of technical people and some things. This is server, I believe, a lot of technical things. So let's go inside. They used to have a nice dragon here. I think Where's from the Lego. Dragon now? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, this part is where we have a lot of meeting rooms where we receive, uh, of, yeah, where we have meetings with customers, etc. Uh, so here you see true gaming. Some of you see we are gaming with a lucky dragon. Uh, There's a dragon. Yeah, well, that was not the one you meant, no, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, here you see the the meeting rooms. Uh, maybe later. Well, I think this is one of our products. This is what I was talking about about the uh, IPC. So this is something. And this is what many people don't know because most people know us from motherboards, graphics card, but MSI yeah. have. We also have make industrial products, products yeah. and server products and. This is one of the products. So maybe let's have a walk around here. So uh, where all the offices are located. If you have a meeting, we don't have a meeting now, so we just continue. <laughs> I think this is a waiting room or something. Let's have a check. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, check that out. Some nice products here. Remember this green one? Oh, I, I like the orange one. <laughs> I, I, that's like, well, should it, be gold. Yeah, it should be gold. But it has a cool copper heat sink this on it. This, I think, is the 100 million edition. Edition, yeah. It's limited, it says on the back. So, you know what this is? All the key company values. Yeah, these are the uh, company values. So, teamwork, like what we always do. We just fight with each other, but... <laughs> Passion. That's, that we have. Yeah, that, that we have. Yeah. Speed. Lack of speed. <laughs> Sometimes. Depends on the, depends on the game. Yeah. And it, focus, commitment. Focus, uh, so these are the key values of MSI. And Both in English and in Chinese. Well, we don't know in Chinese. We guess it's the same, right? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, but in each branch office uh, around the world, you will find a wall with these key values. Uh, so let's go upstairs. All right. So yeah, that was building two. So uh, you know, before this, it was building one, and then also in the basement, you know, with all the testing equipment. Um, now, uh, Eric and Mike were going into building two. Well, as you can see, that's more the um, like the official reception desk, where you know, if you, if you would be a yeah, visitor there, that's pretty much why you would. Yeah, where would, it's more like a corporate, you know, it's all open and it's more like, yeah, welcome. This a is a grand look, entry. Clean, professional looking, yeah, yeah. And also a nice, you know, the big screen that you saw there, the big display. Uh, again, you know, something, something not many people know. Um, again, we don't just make consumer products. We also make a lot of, you know, these big, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, B B2B business, yeah. business type solutions, you know, that you might see touchscreen solutions, register things, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, quite, uh, quite nice. And, you know, the, 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 a nice touch, what they do in these waiting areas, indeed, when you're having a meeting or something and you have to wait. They, they do want to keep it interesting. So there you very often will find, you know, some of our older products, a bit of storytelling yeah. and, you know. Nice to look at, much yeah. history behind it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> one of these cards actually quite funny was uh, the 100 million card um, is actually one of the, well, not one of the first products. It was, I wasn't working at MSI for long when we, when we made that. So uh, yeah, it was quite fun. I, I was allowed to uh, dive into the whole story and I pretty much wrote the uh, the story about that campaign about the 100 million campaign. So I, I you know went and figured out. Well, I didn't do a calculation exactly about how many GPUs we sold because that's pretty much impossible. Uh, we got that information, I believe, from from Nvidia, um, because it was uh, in celebration of 100 million Nvidia-based graphics cards sold ah, yeah, back that back in the day, and it was a I believe a nine GTX 970 or something like that. Great card. Um, and also the, the cooler back, that we had back then, twin, twin 4 5 in that generation was really, really great as well. 
Uh, one of the best coolers. A lot of people love the uh, the radical new design as well with the, the angular stuff, the really the, the red and black. And mm -hmm. then we made a green version, uh, which some people also called the Hulk. Because of obvious reasons. I see where it's coming from, yeah. Yeah, uh, but it was quite nice. And there was a lot of story behind there. It was really fun to dive into that as well and really see, because I got to uh, really figure out you know, from, from the start, what, what were our first products and how did the whole development go? And then you really find out, wow, there's, there's really a hell of a lot of innovation and development that's been going on there in, in, throughout the years, and especially in recent years, where um, well, we really achieved a, a whole new level uh, and are really able to compete with the best brands out there. And we're really proud of that. So, yeah, it's quite a fun thing there. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Mr. Master Master Dogs, thanks for uh, helping us out. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so indeed, uh, D2, yeah. D4, you, you probably you didn't win anything before, so we'll we'll send it out to you in the coming days. Uh, the code, don't worry, uh, you will get it yeah. before the weekend, and then you'll uh, you'll be able to uh, <clears throat> so you can do some nice shopping in the exactly. weekend behind your desk. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, should we do uh, should we do another one? Oh, good one. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see who the next winner is. So if you want to, oh, I see that that's good timing. The bot is now uh, posting the link as well. Uh, if you want to participate in our giveaway, you can still do that. It's a $20 Steam voucher wallet code, and you have to go to msi.com slash two slash insider, or click on the link, uh, the Gleam link in the chat. Uh, you can go to the giveaway directly. There you'll have to perform a few actions, like like and subscribe some of our uh, channels. The more actions you perform, the better your chances to win. And... Uh, May the force be with you. We have the next winner. And uh, my attempt at pronouncing the name is uh, <laughs> Wong Sion. Mm. Sounds that's like that, my kind, it, but... It sounds legit. Yeah, so uh, Wong Sion, if you're still here in the chat, congratulations. Uh, hope you get something nice with it. Now the uh, Christmas is getting close. Yeah, yeah. We'll so, get the $20 uh, Steam yeah, code like to you. Peter already explained. Yeah, as Just, soon as possible. And uh, yeah, congratulations, enjoy it. <coughs> so yeah, you still have a chance to win. Uh, later on this stream, we'll still give away one or two more codes. And uh, yeah, so make sure you participate. Go to the link. Yeah. And uh, good luck, guys. Yep. So let's, uh, let's look at what else they, uh, Eric and, and Mike, have even more stuff. Went, went up All to right. and encountered when they were walking through building two of our MSI headquarters. Let's see. I think okay. uh, hey. I spotted our dragon. Yeah, cool. <laughs> MC. So each department, it's it's locked with a probably you also have a key code, but we have a card and it opens up. You don't get a card, right? I do. Here I got a card. Oh yeah, maybe let us show us this. Maybe it shows the your. Oh, you don't have the other one. No, I don't ah, have it with me. <laughs> we'll show you later. This is the one I was talking about. This is our lucky dragon. dragon. So you built this, right? No, no, In no. In five no, minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> but what we can do... Build our own dragon. You're going to build a blue lucky. Why not? I mean, <laughs> we can try. So, um, as you can see, this is a lucky... I think this is not Lego, but it's like Duplo. Like the bigger version. Yeah, it's glued together. But yeah. We also have them um, in a, a miniature version as, uh, as, as yeah. giveaway. Uh, maybe we should we'll give some away during the live stream. Do we still have them? Yeah, we should need to check. Them. <laughs> but they're very small. Like I mean, this is like Lego uh, uh, parts, but they are uh, much smaller. So yeah, it's, there is it's a small. nightmare to, to put together. Uh, so yeah, here we have. Oh, maybe let, let me do this. So this is the uh, map with all the offices worldwide. So today we are. This is the one. I see the office is here. <laughs> oh, we can move. So that's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> fixed. I don't know uh, if everybody is happy with that. Uh, is so our office in the right place? No, it's, yeah, at, it's at the coast. It's, it's quite strange. It's, it's a little bit more... Oh, yeah, now, I, think, I, now I, think, I removed part of the country. I think that's the German office. Oh, yes. Oh, we don't have two offices in the UK. No. no. And, and this is Poland. It's, uh, it's complicated, let's say like yeah. that. This is uh, Spain. The, oh. No, this is France. Where's Spain? Where and where's Italy? Italy? Where's Turkey? We're missing a few offices. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there, uh, Canada, we have an office. We uh, need to find some red blocks and update this. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are enough blocks over there. Yeah. Let's and fix this later on. Well, we can do. <laughs> so, uh, made for gamers and uh, creators. And creators. That's our uh, current slogan. Um, so, 
you probably already noticed here at the floor, um, the directions are in gamer language. Yeah, so maybe follow us like this. It's Press uh, W, so go to, forward. To our gaming room, yeah, forward. WD is forward right. Yeah. Oh, this is the, the toilet, female toilet, and uh, I think they also have a male toilet. Let me close this. Oh, that's the nice part here. Everything is gaming. You know, there are a lot. It slowly closes. Let's talk All right, so uh, we'll just continue because we still have a lot of it. footage to show you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Spoiler. We'll basically, just much try to fun stuff. shut up as much as possible. Right, so this is. Oh, you directly uh, uh, hear the audio, the, the acoustic. Oh, I thought you were going to say you already smell gaming. But <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is, uh, this is quite fresh. Yeah, it's, it's uh, fresh. But okay. as you can see, this is a setup. Uh, I'm sure Ja and Peter would love this room. Just look at yeah. the wall, the Counter Strike Global Offensive there. Yeah. <laughs> it looks uh, uh, different than ours uh, because we use a green screen and yeah. they have some sort of. Do they have, oh, they have also a green screen. And the green screen is hidden. Uh, I'm a typical guy who wants Don't to break it, Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't break it. Yeah, a little bit green screen. There we go. Maybe during the live stream we can superimpose something in the background. <laughs> yeah, they have the nice, uh, well, let, let's maybe. Uh, <coughs> hey, welcome today by another MSI Insiders live stream. This is the wrong desk for the MSI Insiders. Right? They don't know. <laughs> um, I'm Eric. I'm Mike. Yeah. So, no giveaway? I think we have a giveaway, but okay. then we leave that up to Peter and yeah. John. Okay? So today we're in uh, Amazon issue, Taipei, uh, giving you an Amazon Insider uh, tour. We hope to show you a lot of exciting things. Of course, I mean, we, we need to fit out all the NDA stuff. We uh, cannot show everything, unfortunately. Yeah, Mike is not working. Uh, hey, so here, here they do in uh, Taiwan live streams, and of course it's a different time zone, because uh, now it's CEST in Europe. I think you can see it on my face that it was quite a time zone <laughs> difference. <laughs> You're still living in the European time yeah, zone, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm still living in the European time yeah. zone. Yeah, so, um, yeah, jet lag. It's, um, it's, it's, some, it's something strange, yeah. I'd say like that. Um, so, I mean, they do live streams over here. Maybe this is uh, only for the China or for, or for uh, Taiwan, um, so in Chinese. Um, yeah, so it's in different time zones, so normally we don't see it. We don't, but some of our viewers yeah, will yeah, probably yeah. see it. Yeah, some of our viewers will, yeah. So, um, yeah, they have some, uh, ooh, ooh, nice. A lot of uh, hardware some, over some here. Some NDA stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Keyboard, mice, etc. Uh, yeah, I, I like the design. Uh, we only have a green screen, uh, you know, for our purposes. And here you see they have, uh, I think you can, you can do a LAN party over here. A lot of, I uh, think I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I have something even better. Let's oh. uh, go to the next room. Yeah. So there you see, you know, in the, in our HQ, mm. of course, our HQ room. Also have. Nice uh, oh wait, can you pause it for a second? Yeah. We have. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, our HQ colleagues also have a, a dedicated streaming room. Just you know, we, we also built one here. Um, and as you can see, it's quite nice. You can actually have a, a, like a solid background or a green screen. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, Eric and Mike's attempt at doing uh, their introduction for the stream and even announcing the giveaway, so that's nice. They, they did that a couple of days ago, I believe. I guess that's just what you feel like when you're in a live stream room. Yeah, well, there, it's kind of, it, yeah, it kicks it in, comes right? out, It's yeah. like, yeah, the, the, yeah they're that's used to do. it, so uh, uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, they, they just uh, went out of the, the streaming room and uh, yeah, look what they encounter there. I mean, we're not with two persons in town. We're with three persons in that one. Peter is with us. Yeah, you know this guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's hidden it's, behind yeah. his virtual reality <laughs> headset. I, I think we did this two years ago, uh, or, or maybe three years ago. Uh, when we were in Taiwan, uh, they wanted to shoot a campaign and they had a model booked. But the model, we found out, was the same like one of our competitors were shooting. And then they asked Peter, and I acted as his agency, so I pinned him out. Actually, he didn't get any money, I guess. <laughs> he just needed to sign a lot of papers. Um, you can find them on buildings here. Uh, you can find them uh, on I the saw a picture of that. That was a big building. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was a huge Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we can insert uh, later in editing. I mean, this is all pre recorded over here.
Um, and yeah, they discovered that by accident, there was some one of our competitors actually had used the exact same stock image. Um, and, and yeah, and, and you know, I was there. So they kind of went, well, you, you look like a European kind of dude. So would, 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 <laughs> you just, would you just <laughs> please put this headset on and, and, you know, just don't mind the camera. Just, just, you know, wave around a bit and let us take some pictures. <clears throat> just be um, white. Yeah, and that, that got way out of control. Um, I was, uh, I was on, you, you know, you saw earlier, you know, they, they print stuff on the elevators and stuff. So I was on there for like a whole year or something. I was on the, what Mike's talking about was uh, uh, Taipei uh, Central Station. So there was, uh, yeah, th there was a huge... Uh, oh, some people still have sound issues. There was a huge sign of me basically on Taipei Central Station, which you know, and and I was on on taxi cabs. You know, they they just printed it everywhere, and and also on the big, really big on the booth on Computex. So every all the colleagues were sending me pictures when I was already back here, going like, "Hey, I saw you today," and mm -hmm. you know, it was like, "Oh my no, you god, didn't. I, no, you did." I I you know, I just did it to try and help these guys out, and I I really didn't expect them to take it this far, but hey, you know, fine. Um, did you at least get like a VJ? No, no, it was it was just you know, again for me it was like. Yeah, it was like 10, 15 minutes work or something. Well, work. I mean, just put on a headset and pretend to be VR gaming or, you know, like that. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, and they, <laughs> they just take pictures and oh, that's it. And then they just turn out pretty well. Pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy I was able to help them out. So, and it turned out pretty okay, I guess. But uh, yeah, it, it was quite confronting when you see yourself. You know, in so many I places, people imagine, keep, keep yeah. sending you pictures like, oh, look, I saw you today. It's like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> Especially when you didn't expect it, though. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Eric just wanted to remind me of that, uh, which is fine. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> it's WA. Ah. Go left. Gaming room. Yeah. I think we're going to stay here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is actually the gaming room in ASU. I told you already that a lot of uh, employees are gamers. Uh, Most of them, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, some years ago, this was different because uh, you know we didn't focus on gaming, and also not many employees knew about gaming. So and then we, we when we started to focus on gaming, we also started to change our hiring policy. I mean, why not hire gamers who know about the product, uh, who know what you need in a game in order to win? So uh, this is so, one of uh, so my job interview. I had to game against Eric, <laughs> so it was very easy to get hired. <laughs> you lost. In our tournament, I remember a live stream. Uh, Watch uh, it back. Let's uh, continue <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Next time we do Battlefield. <laughs> um, so uh, during lunch breaks, uh, our colleagues are gaming here. So you see a lot of one, two, three, four, five. Five chairs this side. Still smells like fast food a little bit. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> Uh, so uh, also uh, chairs on that side, and then if you walk here to the back, it's a nice place for somebody put a screen on uh, before it. But in the back, you uh, used to be the screen used to be here. This uh, is this is for the cheaters, so they can hide behind. No, the no, no. <laughs> this was like for the judge or something, and then the, mm -hmm. you have a screen which can come down over here, uh, so they, they could really have uh, tournaments uh, during uh, lunch breaks. Uh, here, uh, still a dragon. I'm not. Oh. Don't break it. <laughs> yeah. I see a remote control. Shall I just push it? This is going wrong. Uh. Hashtag play Merrick. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah. So, so that was the gaming room. Uh, quite fun. So, actually, uh, uh, fun fact: they don't only do uh you know uh, colleagues can game there if there's nothing else going on there but they also uh invite uh like i don't know it's not really pro teams but maybe amateur teams or something to go there and, and follow gaming clinics so, and they'll uh, invite you know the pro players or their um uh, their coaches their team coach for example and then they'll let teams play against each other and they'll do like analytics after they finish uh, the match, and, you know, and, and they'll just point out, oh, look, what, what you did there, that was actually, you know, the cause of what happened after that, so you need to think about that, blah, blah, blah. They'll do a whole analytics series, and yeah, it's quite nice, um, actually. 
So I uh, I never game there. Uh, you know, the, you the, the whole it? the whole no 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 the whole uh, CS:GO. Usually when I'm there, I I have a full you know agenda and I don't really have time to do. Ah, oh, come on. When I when usually when I when I get back to the hotel, I do play some games because I'll I'll bring uh, an extra notebook. But yeah, you know, it's uh, I don't really have time for it. And uh, by the time I go back to the hotel, if I'm there, it's usually around eight, nine, ten o'clock p.m. Yeah, so well, it's always yeah. long working hours there. Anyway, it is. Yeah, there's there's always too much to do and too little time to to do it in. Um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> next time, let, let's see what happened after uh, after Eric uh, sabotaged the stream. The lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, the notebook design room. Yes, welcome to our ID showroom. Thank you. Okay. So, you're Aaron, right? Yes, yes, I'm Aaron. And, uh, and my yes. name is Winner. Hi, Winner. Hi, Aaron. Okay. So, what do you do here at MSI? Uh, before, before design, we make some markup or color proposal here and uh, check our design with PM or MET. And uh, just like that, we can see the uh, Maga to model, yes. So you're like in the very early phase of what the product will actually look like. Yeah, this is the actually the role model of the the notebook as you see, and this is probably the mockup. Looks yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. So Nothing on there. Yeah. So no no keys yet. Yeah. So this is this like is fully metal, right? Yeah, this is solid aluminium. Yeah, so we just use the CNC machine and then carve the shape that we want. Then then just uh, have a quick view about the how big the machine is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then and then and then after we have we'll move on to the color color plan or some stuff. So are these like the same notebooks, but this is like one version further than this one? Yeah, this is pro probably in the, the first stage of the notebook. And then that is the uh, second more detailed mockup with colors. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And here we see some letters and stuff on there. Yeah. This it's already much more complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that is... We Show want them to make side by side because that's, that's quite a big difference already. Yeah, we try it's hard to, to tell. They're the same notebook, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to make that as more real as possible. Yeah, okay. So that uh, before the production, if you see it, then you will feel that the the markup is more um, more reality, mm -hmm. more real. Yeah. I see a lot of stuff on the wall. That's for inspiration. Yes. Yes. That is our current current uh, color trim for the for the twenty twenties. Different texture like glass. It looks a little bit like a smartphone cover almost. Yeah, we'll try <laughs> to make it smaller, uh, easy to see. Yes. So let's show this from up close. So this is like a color pre preview of is it like the upper lid of the notebook? So what will come here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, yeah. So oh. basically, we just use a lot of color and texture to show the, the what kind of material we want to use, and then we will decide it. Uh, when we decide it, we will put on the mock-up. Okay. Mm. So these are all different kind of materials, so because this is this is glass. Uh, this is glass. Yeah, and this is just plastic with paint. Oh, glass would be bad for me. Mm. Yeah, I would drop my notebook once. And <laughs> <laughs> but that is very hard glass. It's not easy to break. Very strong glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Mm, yes, yes. And some of the paint are very. Very uh, has two layers with the uh, more higher gloss mm -hmm. to show the better reflection in the light. Yeah. So how how do you start picking a color? Like, is it I like blue best? Let's go for blue, or do you have like certain ideas behind that? Uh, we we choose like uh, this is more fashion, so mm -hmm. we choose some color from it and. Uh, So you have like for each type, for, for example, the 60s, you have certain color schemes. Yeah, we start from the, the keywords, some of the keywords like modern or old school, some kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we try to find some, find some key feature like the, uh, what kind of, the, what kind of um, material or what kind of uh, style 
that uh, or fashion or color what that in that the uh, period of time and then we start to find out uh, find the, the image and to inspire us and then we just put it together and, and see what will the those category will look like and then we can yeah, so you saw, you know, a lot of things that goes on to, into notebook design as well, which of course is a very different product from, from our components, from a motherboard or graphics cards, you know, there's a lot of other things that go into it. Um, and, you know, the cover is one of the most important things because that is what you will see on the outside a lot of the time, of course. Uh, so as you can see, you know, they've got like these mood boards or however you want to call it, you know, they've, they've got just basically different styles or... or, or uh, like the 60s or something, you know, like if you think about that, what kind of colors and then yeah. the, the surfing. The cover. So they try to match, like they make a palette of what goes with this kind of theme. If we go for, for example, a 60s look and feel, what kind of shapes, uh, colors, uh, language, that kind of thing. So they, they just build a whole theme. Uh, and they've got several of it, and they, then they can always, you know, look at, okay, so which kind of theme do we think we want to go for? Because obviously they want to they wanna go for unique products, but they also want to, of course, go for products that you would actually buy. It's not like, you know, they want to make something that you think, yeah, that's nice, but I would never buy that. <laughs> so and there's always, you know, because you, you, I see some people saying, yeah, some of those glass samples look sweet, and sure, but I mean, would you buy a, a whole laptop that was covered in that i'll think twice <laughs> uh, because it, it is very very shiny and you know it's it's maybe a bit too much for some people again for some people some people might actually like it uh, but yeah it's, it's an interesting process and as you can see they've got a hell of a lot of you know samples and stuff yeah, like that a lot of concepts yeah 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 so uh mike actually discovered some more stuff there which we also want to show with you so let's go to that if we walk here i see some very nice these are also mock-ups? Yeah, this is also the... Very light. Yeah. Very so light. nothing in here, I think? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for sure. Oh, I like idea. this design. Let me show this up close. <laughs> I don't know if it's easy to see, but there is a nice dragon on there. Yeah, actually, that is, they have designed the, the dragon inside so, a kind of pattern. So when can I expect this on the market? Because I like it. <laughs> Near future. <laughs> near future, near future. <laughs> Probably next year. Yeah, we're still uh, discussing uh, the, what kind of, uh, uh, when are we going to release. So still early in the process. Yeah, but it's more close to the end. Yeah. Okay. So potentially, you just saw something there that's going to be on the market next year uh, on our laptop. So <laughs> yeah, I mean... MSI Insider, right? We give inside information. <laughs> you saw it here first. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they, they showed it and we were able to film it, so who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, it just shows you that they're, they're constantly looking at new designs and trying out new things and um, yeah, who knows? <laughs> so I believe Mike, had, uh, we, last week we had a stream where we covered a couple of products um, and one of it was uh, our, at the moment, one and only AMD notebook. Uh, which was called series. the Alpha Alpha 15, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I saw some people saying in the chat, uh, they, were, they had some comments about the logo because it has like a green phoenix type. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, a green logo on it. And they said, it's odd because, you know, it's AMD. Why would it have a, a green logo? That's just kind of reminds you, know, you of someone else. Yeah, it <laughs> reminds you of the other team, maybe. Um, but Mike actually discovered something al alongside or, or among the samples he saw there, which might actually make it more apparent mm. why they made the choice for green. So let's, yeah. let's look at that. So what else do we have? Some drawers here. Just gonna open everything up here. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all different covers on top. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe people will recognize this logo because this is Quite a recent product. Yeah, very new, very new for AMD logos. Let me yeah. show this up front. So also the different colors, just testing out what works best. Yeah, we're trying to put on the uh, different kind of uh, texture, like different uh, making process and different colors to show what kind of the color match or fit on this uh, AP, A case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, to show. Uh, and we will decide it afterwards that, uh, mm, Maybe good, uh, the green one is really 
uh, match with the black or the other colors. So that's why you already put it on the surface that you will also use in the actual product? Yes, and uh, also if you feel the, the, the height, Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then you can you can feel that uh, there is a some some of them are no gap or some of them a higher gap. Because we are also testing with what kind of uh, depth we want to put on the a case. Yeah. So which one won in the end? It's not here. But ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is just like uh, this was just in the very early phase yeah, experimenting. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many of these? logos to experiment with before you make the actual choice? Oh, more than 100. More than 100? More than 100, yeah. Because they w also have a lot of test, uh, testament we need to try on the, the, the logo. Like, uh, yeah. mm, we have to put it on the, um, like a water waterproof or some kind of stuff. Yeah, and the also like an eraser or the pen. Uh, if we draw it on the logo, what? How many times will that like, like affect the, this kind of brand and also the decays as well? So that's for durability also. Yeah, also. Okay, nice. All right. Get some more cases and all the different colors again. Mm. So here we're already going more towards yeah. how it will look in the end. Yeah. So we can this see the logo on top of the, it. The very very close to the real to the real version. product yeah yeah nice right so some of you guys had uh, i don't know who it was that was uh, you know commenting on it and it, it might indeed at first you might think it's strange but if you see it like this <sighs> My first reaction was, oh, the green does actually jump out at yeah. you, you know, so it's, it, it you know, it, it just puts it in a different light and they went for the decision that, you know, this logo by itself, uh, because they look at it as, you know, just a new logo uh, and it, it, it replaces the MSI, the, the red shield. Um, so then, you know, what looks nice? And of course, you could see that they tested with uh, the silver version they showed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, the white one, I believe, on the top left, you know, that also jumps out. But it's, you know, it's white. So it's kind of, I don't know, it, it's it, some people might find it a bit boring or something. So in the end, they went for green because it's also a nice, you know, uh, bright color that really jumps out. Yeah, it definitely catches your eye. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, Mike caught that. So we thought that was quite interesting to maybe put in there. So... For, for you guys who were wondering how did they actually get to the green logo, well, this is part of the process um, and this is part of why they went for green in the end. So uh, hopefully that sheds a little light on that mystery. Uh, let's see uh, the last few things um, that they uh, filmed because we're, we're nearly done uh, with the stream. But uh, right, let's, let's go. Let's just see the last few footages they, uh, they recorded. So where okay. are we now? We're on the MSI roof, rooftop. So uh, we're a bit higher than is officially allowed. Usually. Yeah, we sneaked up here, but the view is awesome. Uh, yeah, you can see good. the street over there uh, with all the small shops, uh, the, the factories, uh, well, factories, you know, the, 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 the small businesses. At a night, lot of small businesses yeah, here. At night, everything lights up with neon lights and signs saying, buy me, eat me, and whatever. See also over here, a lot of uh, building going on. Actually, normally... If that's the, a bad thing, because now you cannot see the Taipei 101 anymore. Yeah, it, that's <laughs> what I would just want to say. If the weather is good, you can see the 101 from here. Uh, but now the people uh, from uh, who are located in Asia are complaining, because there are a lot of new buildings that are well. blocking the view. <laughs> uh, but it's quite windy here. Maybe we should add a few, yeah. <laughs> a few blocks so we can look yeah, over indeed. the new building. Yeah. But on the, on the top floor of the canteen, and this is the roof of the canteen. So uh, we're now going to the canteen uh, to see over there how you, you should try something. What's best in the canteen here? Everything. <laughs> best, Everything. The best canteen we have. <laughs> the best canteen <laughs> the in the world. The only canteen. <laughs> Eric, are you hungry? Yeah, a little bit. So this is our canteen. Uh, on each of the two buildings uh, we have a canteen, big one. So everybody is eating over here, as you can see. A lot of hungry people. Here. Yeah. So let's have a check. So over here there is a, a cafeteria. Bar. Yeah, a cafeteria, a coffee yeah. bar, sunny, sunny bar. I see some bananas. 
So, uh, some, some sweet stuff. Some sweet stuff. Breath is really sweet over here, right? Yeah, yeah it's extremely sweet. Yeah. This is, uh, I think, plum juice. You remember? I tried plum juice. It was not my fan. It was like <laughs> sour plum juice. That was too much for me. It's also yeah. a bit salty. So over here, a lot of uh, snacks, uh, peanuts, etc. So maybe uh, let's walk over there. I'm getting hungry as well now. <laughs> so you have different parts where you can get the food? Yeah. And there's a gym in the back. Yes, uh, we have a gym. So uh, first so you get fat because of all of the food and then you, you don't can get, go You don't get fat of this food. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how it works, but basically you can make your choice what kind of food you need. Um, it looks like today they have Chinese food. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is really good food. Uh, over here we have a gym. Uh, so people doing workout uh, during the lunch, but also uh, after, after lunch. lunch yeah. yeah. And over there, I think you can order some uh, noodle soup, etc. So let's maybe walk that way. I think these are also for soup. Uh, some uh, rice. rice and stuff. Yeah. So long waiting line, so it should be good. <laughs> so there you can see it's really lunch time. <laughs> yeah. So let's continue this way. So this is an in-house doctor, uh, medical support. So if you're sick or something, uh, <laughs> you can go here. I was, I was one time here, I really felt sick and I'm not sure what kind of pills they gave me, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really. Yeah. So in here you go outside. To enjoy so, the view a little more. Yeah. All right. So guys, that was it. Uh, pretty much, they, well, they tried to cover as much as possible from my HQ. They tried to, especially, you know, not just cover like, hey, look at that person there yeah. and look at the lucky there. And yeah. they also tried to cover really like interesting stuff like yeah, testing awesome. and, and, you know, I mean, big thanks to Henry and uh, Jerry for uh, explaining a lot of this stuff and then all the other people, Anthony, uh, for their time. Um, yeah, we, we hope you liked this exclusive view of HQ. Uh, yeah. You probably might have seen some, some NDA products there, some products that are actually coming up um, in, in the coming year or years, I don't know, um, maybe not. But yeah, I really hope you, you guys enjoyed this exclusive view yeah. of mm. our HQ. Maybe now you also have a little bit of a, an idea what our headquarters actually looks like. As you I can do. see, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's, it's two buildings. It's quite big. There's uh, literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of people working there uh, each day. Um, yeah. So and and yeah, I mean, I was also I didn't even know that I've been there a couple of times. Luckily, I never needed to go to the in-house medical department, but. Uh, it's good to know that they have it because you know if you you have that many people there, hey, there's bound to be somebody you know not feeling well at some point, and um, either they can go home, uh, or if I mean if you have a doctor's in house, it just saves a hell of a lot of time for everybody, and you get helped quite fast. So yeah, okay, so you can still work while you're sick at work. No, no, no. I mean if you're really <laughs> sick, you still go home, but at least you you go home and you yeah. already have you know you've already seen the doctor, you've already got your medicine, so. It's not that when you get home, you still have to go to the doctor, you know? It's, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they perform surgery there. Uh, no idea, in case you're wondering that. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Mazdaq, that's pretty much the point. Yeah, you, you do not just call in sick in Taiwan. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you never like calling in sick uh, because, yeah, you just want to be back on your feet as soon as possible. Yeah, so... Um, Thank you guys for joining uh, and, and uh, sticking with us. Let us know yeah. in the comments also if you like this kind of stream. You know, maybe we can yeah. do something this like this more often. Uh, we, we just thought we, we would try it out and see how, how it comes out. And if you guys like this kind of content or not. Um, also, let us know if, if there's any other things you would like to see uh, from our HQ or, or things that we kind of skip now or uh, other than, you know, products that are we're not allowed to talk about yet. Because yeah, obviously exactly. that one we cannot do. Um, yeah, we're gonna do one last winner for the giveaway, right? Yeah, let's so see. Let's, let's do our final winner for today. Ja will run the So script. the final winner yes. will be... Give it to me. Hopefully an easy name. Come on. 
we have it, and it's uh, next per. Ooh, I actually saw it. that. That's, 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 that's a coincidence. I, I'm seeing oh, next per right actually there. asking. Yeah, next Who's, who's, the, who's the last winner? Well, you apparently are. it's you. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations, dude. Uh, yeah. Um, congratulations. You win a $20 Steam code as well. We'll, yeah, we'll email then. it out to you uh, in the coming days, before the weekend at least, uh, so that you'll have yeah, something extra to spend on Steam. Yeah. I mean... It's once again, guys, it's just a big coincidence. Uh, yeah. 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 So, we, we, again, it's a, it's a, it's a I don't know, is there like a Google Assistant or something that's listening on this? I don't know. It's This is weird. Congratulations, man. Congratulations is all we can say. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for joining. Uh, what do we have next week? Well, next week, we're going to have a nice contrast between a brand new product that we're bringing out, which is a portable gaming monitor. A portable gaming monitor? Yes, I mean, a portable but you, one. I mean, this is a gaming monitor, you can pick it up. That doesn't make it portable, no. right? Exactly. So that one is really just like a tablet-sized gaming monitor that you can take with you anywhere. Just put it in your backpack, in between your arms, anywhere you go, it can go with you. It doesn't even need mm. battery. Well, you've certainly got my interest. So more details for next week, and the next week's uh, contract is behind that one, and the big one that we're bringing out, the Sweet 2.2 CQR, which is the full-on... 32 inch quality immersive gaming mm. so next week is all about the contract between these two mm. so hope to see you there guys yeah. and if you enjoy today's live stream we hope you enjoy it next week too if you're yeah. there make sure you join next week and uh yeah we'll see you then have a good day then have a good evening bye bye cheers